it's almost like a head spin. It's like, what is going on? I don't even know how to respond or react. Um, all I know is that my mental and emotional state is right now in danger. And if that goes, then everybody's going to die. Yeah. Literally, physically. Yeah. It also makes me nervous when Danae was saying, like, everybody would have died. It almost sounded like she was saying she was prepared to take her, her kids, and him out. Yeah. That's what it sounded like. It sounded like she just wasn't mentally stable. Yeah. Like, that was the last the last little bit of sanity she had is like that was being stripped away. What's up, y'all? My name is Nick Rochelle. And I am Carla Rochelle, and we are a married couple. On this channel, we share our genuine reactions to some of the hottest content on YouTube. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you want to join the membership to our channel and become one of our little freaks... Hit the join button for exclusive perks. Without further ado, shout out to the members of our channel. All right, y'all asked for it, so here it is, babe. Who are we reacting to today? All right, this is exclusive part two. So sorry, Miss Jackson. Denia Jackson, marriage, infidelity, and word curse. Word curse, interesting. Hmm. I think it's Denia. De oh, yeah, I think it's Denea. Denea. I, yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, part one was pretty interesting, so we decided to go ahead and just rock it out with part two. Before yeah. we actually do us a favor, hit the like button because it helps us grow. Hit the thumbs up, y'all. Let's go. What did that do to you? I became a shell of myself. I didn't know who I was. I actually have a couple posts on my page where I was like, I have a post that says, I knew her body better than I knew my own. Stop. Let that sit there. You said you knew another woman's body better than you knew your own. Yes, several, several women. I know several, I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. And um, I spent a lot of time, like I was, I, I went in such a, a deep hole where I was like studying these women. I would go to their profiles and I would study their pages and like what they wear. I knew when they were meet, when they had met up. So I've, I watched their videos of them having sex. So I would try to imitate that and recreate wow. that in our relationships so that he could choose me and want me it's like she had completely lost herself in this guy yeah i don't think she ever knew who she was that's yeah. the thing yeah. like when you don't know who you are and then um you get with somebody like this it, it could be a minute before you learn who you are and it was somebody who left a comment on our channel and i actually I thank them for leaving the comment because they was talking about how they, um, you know, they teeth was crooked. They had acne growing up. So they were saying the best thing that a parent can do is instill self-confidence in a child. And I totally agree with that because you do have some kids, even me, I went through um, my family talking about me when I was growing up and that can hurt you because it made me have like self-esteem issues when it came to my lips or it came to my complexion or my butt. So it's like some people feel like, oh, I'm just taunting, but I really do think that that's something important to do because every child don't stay in that phase and they can turn out to be so beautiful and the last thing you want them to do is like um this person said is when somebody give them the slightest bit of attention it's kind of like okay and they just go with whatever it is because they're not used to getting attention mm -hmm. i never imagined my public healing would to reach oh i asked people um what was he healed from and they said and correct me if i'm wrong because i'm just getting from the comments they say he's healed been healed or delivered from uh being married and cheating on his wife i saw that or something like that and we went through a divorce so he's being healed what from being a cheater or <laughs> they say we'll have to go back and watch his story actually when they said it they said i said you know podcast. something i said i might actually go and check it out especially with us driving now yeah. i might just let that shit play so i can see okay what's really going on yeah that's the best way to get some content in like some podcasts yeah listen to it while you're driving 
the world. God, you share the Phoenix Bowl. Forever act like I'm getting a woman of God. Thank you. Manifestation. See you sell it script. Due to who you are, let it wealth, and it means Harris R. Whitfield. And this. I thought it was, I was wondering if it was going to be him being delivered from being gay. You know, I heard that one, uh, yeah, I remember that one preacher. When I was in the church heavy, I remember hearing his story about him being gay and being delivered. But I heard he's still struggling with that shit to this day. Yeah, see, I didn't know. I thought he um, just had like a high sex drive. And I thought he was looking for his future wife. But that was something that he had to overcome. So, but... It could be like kind of like Kirk Franklin. How uh, Kirk Franklin had that uh, I think sex L- addiction. I think LL Cool J did too. With a sex addiction. Uh huh. Yeah. This is the Dear Future Wifey Jeez. Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latera Sarah Whitfield. Hey, are you still shacking up with us? I bet you not anymore after the episode that y'all saw yesterday. <laughs> now we are back at part two. Uh, make I'm a commitment. Shacking. Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure that um, you join us in November on the healing retreat. The if you you I may end up you know sponsoring you to come down there if you want to come out to the Las yeah. Cabos you want to come I, absolutely sign me up okay I got my passport it's uh, ready okay so there it is <laughs> I I can't wait to travel hey make yes. room we're gonna have we're gonna have the nail here I want to gift her that, that for uh you. for Christmas she gonna she gonna go happy to, birthday to me because it's also my birthday yeah it's gonna be your birthday in December so yes. that's that's great so <laughs> yeah, we'll be there no she's a uh, a sad. November the 9th through the 12th. Um, yes. And so it's going to be absolutely amazing. So the healing retreat. Uh, make sure that y'all go oh, nice. to mm-hmm. ICan'tWaitToTravel.com and you'll see it on there, the healing retreat Thanks with the Terrace R. Whitfield. Oh, and man. I'm bringing my boy Bashe Williams along with us. Now, got that wedding ring on proudly. <laughs> part one, Danea. We talked about some stuff now. Did we? Yeah. Listen, yeah. I was just getting started. That was the pregame. That's the appetizer. Oh, that's the pregame. Appetizer. Well, let me tell you something, because now <laughs> the hashtag is defined XYZ is going to be De- what it is. Define it. Define commitment. We gotta. We have to be very specific and crystal clear on here. Define wedded bliss. What is that? <laughs> define <laughs> uh, not being inappropriate. Right. Define it. Define it. Define be, it. You know, like, define, like, like let's define a lot of things, okay? <laughs> So. I understand what you mean when you go through what you've been through, because when you deal with that certain type of personality, it'll make you have to rethink and restructure and reimagine what words actually mean, because those words can be used against you. And we'll dig deeper into that. And so now we left off. You're in your first year of marriage. Yes. And um, you found that Derek was having a. Uh, inappropriate conversations with people from his past that he had a sexual relationship with and um and then later on you would begin to find out that it wasn't just conversations it had moved to actual sexual acts yes yes and again i didn't find that out until 2019 so we got married january 2018 2018 i found out in november of 2019 that there was a lot of um, conversations that had turned into physical interactions um, from that point. So in that time span, I had actually began working on myself. I I had 500 followers at the time. Oh, look at you, 500 followers. 500, I was there doing big things. It's like you're doing something. You're like, I All got All kinds of big things. I was known. <laughs> People knew who I was. No, okay. We didn't. <laughs> he over here with one point didn't something even know million. That nigga was married. Everybody knew who I was. Okay. <laughs> and so I had actually started a little journey um, on Instagram at the time with like losing weight. I lost sixty six pounds. I had. Congratulations. I told you I had enrolled. Thank you. I had enrolled in therapy. So my therapist is like helping me through this time as I'm losing weight, and I'm like, yeah. I'm becoming a better person, a better woman. I'm becoming more secure, like in myself and confident in myself. Look at all this weight I just lost. I've been putting this work in. I'm mm-hmm. fine. After two kids, two whole yeah. kids. I'm yeah. looking fine. Okay. And yeah. then it was at that point I like, I'm gonna. I want to start traveling with you. I'm going on tour with you. So then he, he, he did the self love tour with um, uh, Steph, Steven Speaks and yeah. all that, and I was there at almost every tour stop. Did people know who you were when they saw you? They did not know who I was until I said I'm his wife. And there was a few times where I had to, I mean, literally our team, because I I coordinated our team to travel with us, that I, the people that I hired to come with us. And 
they were literally like holding me back at some of these events like don't do it and i'm like well what are you about to do listen i was not always saved <laughs> okay so there was there's you know when you have a husband that is um in the spotlight women feel like they can do whatever they want they can talk to him how they could touch however they want oh you're so fun these little touches turn into something touches. else some more touches other touches mm -hmm. right there was a lot of that there was a woman that was bold enough to sit on his lap and he didn't even do anything about it and i i i had better words from at that time because i had been in therapy so i was practicing those tools and you know it still was like okay well this is part of my job this is what comes with it you have to be more secure oh, and i'm like no. um i'm secure but it is not okay it that's kinda, just that's disrespectful it kind of makes me think about how you always say that it's like your partner's job to make you feel. like for example in our relationship carla says that it's her job to make sure that i make me feel secure in yes. our relationship yeah and vice versa yeah so like if we go out and we're around other people like i shouldn't be wor worried about carla doing the most with somebody yeah like it's vice versa it's okay to be a free spirit yeah yeah so and this is what i mean let me give an example at one point in my relationships I would do whatever because it's always been this thing. Carla going to do what she want to do. And everybody who got with me realized that I don't care if I was somewhere. And if I wanted to dance with somebody else, it was just like whatever I wanted to do. Cause I was the turn up queen, but I realized later on, you can't do that. Like if it's like, you give the same respect that you you know that you expect so once i got older and i wasn't so immature i realized the things that i was doing was wrong and if your mate is coming to you and like why was you all over that guy like that or why did you do that like don't just try to brush it off like it's nothing because it's something to them if they're bringing it to your attention i'm glad they got you right before you got to me honey i probably would have i know because well, I, I had to that, get me i I, no. I never in a million years thought I would marry a Sagittarius because I always felt like they were too much. For yeah, me. and we really are. I'm telling you, that's why I used to be particular about the people I used to date because like a certain type of thug i'd be like oh no that nigga ain't finna choke me i ain't finna kill me because i know me yeah. i know who i am yeah. so i'm like i'm gonna save myself i'm not finna date him a little laid back signs and walked all over <laughs> their ass whoa they ass out <laughs> no it's like you just have to have a certain type of you have to carry yourself a certain type of way if i get with you and if you showing me that you playing games then back then when i used to be like oh okay you want to play games I can play games with your ass too but then at some point I got older and I'm just like ain't nobody got time for this shit mm -hmm. for this to happen you know and so that just kind of became a dynamic um, throughout the rest of the tour but we made it through by God's grace but yeah there was a couple times where they had to hold me back. So he welcomed you on the tour. It wasn't like yeah. he was trying to tell you to stay at home. Or he didn't tell me to stay. He let me. He let me come. I was running, running things. I, I was taking pictures of him and all the people. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, when it got out of control, I would give a look and be like, you know, I am his wife. And I, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Because I didn't know he was married. I didn't know he was married until the infamous <laughs> no uh, bonnet video. I, I never knew he was married. A lot of a lot of people apparently didn't know he was married, but he he did make a couple of videos here Girl, and there please. that after the th the thousands of videos he made he made a couple about you or mentioned you said he was married what what video was that there's a was exactly a long, like, like when we first got married he exactly um, on youtube where he was actually live on youtube and it's still i, I don't know if it's still do she not realize new people come around all the time that ain't gonna go back and watch that video because i had no earthly idea his ass was married still up there but he talked about um our marriage and how we got married and all that and then don't forget your crown he talks about me and him and our relationship that and that's book? getting what married is, yeah that's a, one of his books and he talked about us getting married which was his number one like book outside of um a cheating man's heart series wow i got something for y'all I, I, I saw some shade right there but uh <laughs> but it, was, it is it, it's called a cheating man's heart in this three series the three-part book uh, outside of that don't forget your crown is right there where he talks about me and us my name is all up in the book 
in our relationship, or parts of it are in there. You <laughs> say parts. And so. <laughs> the nail be throwing this little light, little shade. Up. Yes. You got to catch it because you just toss it out there a little I bit. I am a woman of God. <laughs> you know, like I have, I have integrity and. She but, said parts of it. Part It is. It's the truth, though. <laughs> there are parts of it in there and parts of it are true. So he did talk about it a little bit, but it was not this, you know, how we see most people like, oh, this is my wife. Yeah. You know, you ain't gonna see no Gabrielle and Dwayne that. Wade type of stuff right. or Sierra and Russell. Right. You know. Right. And then when I when I started asking for that, it was like, uh, you gonna make the block hot? <laughs> exactly. Um, and I'm like, I don't care if I make the block hot. I'm your wife, and um, you gonna make the block hot. So, <laughs> what did that mean to you? What do you mean by that? When you say you gonna make the block hot? Well. Uh, by the time I was really like forceful, like, hey, you need to take a stand for who who you're. If you're saying you want me, you need to take a stand. I need to see this translated. Yeah. And it was like, well, you know, it's like, okay, I'm just coming off of this, gonna make the block hot. You know, like, I had to let go of these people and they, they're gonna be upset. And I'm like, I don't care. Let go of what people? What are you talking about? The women. He didn't tell you that. The net, he didn't tell you that if you if you come out and share if he comes out and share that y'all are married that he would have to let go of women. It, no, he yeah, he say he was saying that he had to let go of these women right behind the behind the scenes. I'm gonna make the block hot, or he's gonna make the block hot, or I'm gonna make the block hot for him posting me after he's let go of these women because their feelings are gonna be hurt. Right? Are you talking about women that you knew about before, right. prior to the marriage? Okay, prior, but you always prior to the been marriage, the in the marriage. Okay, so when <laughs> when 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 I was very forceful about it, yes. When I was very forceful about it, we had our, this is you know like two years ago, you know, so we already in the marriage. So when I was like, you need to take a stand. You want me back? This is what needs to okay, happen. Okay, so we fast forward it. Yeah. So this is when you <laughs> you, you took a because you mentioned in uh, part one that it was an eight month. Yeah, so I was gone for eight months. So I left in February of 2020. To I left Georgia and I went to Denver. Boy, he probably was clapping so many cheeks. And he was balls deep. Yes, balls deep. I slept on my mama's couch with my two kids. And and while he's women, sleeping in the bed be, and rolling around in the bed with other women. Some women be thinking that's a punishment. It be giving them an opportunity to make up for lost time. Yeah, and actually sometimes they be like, whew. <laughs> now I can fuck some other bitches. <laughs> <laughs> um, for eight months and what I stayed made you away. Leave? And then once they done raw dog a few of them, then they try to reach out and be like, I want my family back. There was a lot. <laughs> It was a lot going on at that time. I had already knew about the infidelity um, since Thanksgiving, um, around the Thanksgiving time, where we hosted his whole family in our house. And it was the hardest thing I had to do to sit there and be in a, with his family and all that. I went to Thailand with my mom and my best friend a couple yeah. weeks after that. And I gave him, I was talking to the Lord and I was like, okay, Lord, I can't continue to do this. And I was like, okay, you need to choose between the condo and the family that you created. Right. And I really feel like I heard that from the Lord to ask to like to tell him to do that because he was spending a lot of time. We had a condo and then we had a mansion and I was in a mansion, a 9000 square foot mansion by myself wow. with two kids, more nights than I should be. Like our the people that clean our house were in there more with me and the kids than yeah. he was. And so um, I, I really feel like I heard that from the Lord, like, hey. Choose between the condo, you're spending all your time, and the family you created. And he got so upset. So upset. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. You know, like, and I'm like, you need to choose, like, what you're what you're going to do. And at that point, I still had not told him that I know about all of the so, stuff. So, again, that's so, amazing how you, you came out and talked about it in premarital counseling, and yeah. then now you withdrew again and didn't bring it up again in I, marriage. Right, because that, that scared me. Okay, all of the anger that I received after just telling him how I actually felt, like how I was imp impacted by his decision-making in that time and his res his reaction to that, it was not a, like, that didn't invite safety. Yeah. You know, that didn't invite like, oh, continue to do this. Like I, at that point, still had not even unpacked the, the rape trauma. So right. 
all of that is like fear. <laughs> like, okay, if I continue to talk about this, it's going to push him away. We're married now. I'm yeah. definitely not trying to get a divorce and be left with these two kids <laughs> by myself. And, you know, I, I quit my job to be a stay at home mom and to work um, with him. And, you know, so I just withdrew within self. I had not overcome all those things yet. I had not unpacked all those things yet. So fear, I was almost like intimidated by him. And then you add on some things that I had not dealt with with my daddy issue. All yeah. of it kind of equated into me withdrawing back into to, to self, into my little shell. So um, again, I had to unpack all of those things just to to get to a point to be in a sound mind. So when you left, what did you say when you left? I didn't say anything. You just, he just I, came home one day, he was gone. Well, he was at the condo. He decided he was gonna go to the condo because we had a big falling out. So it was a condo in the same city? Yeah, it's in Atlanta. It was in downtown, mid midtown. So you had um, a condo in the house? We had an, a 9,000 square foot mansion in the same neighborhood that um, the Migos, one of the Migos people, I don't even know their name, so I, so, but one of them lived like not far. So why do you think you need a condo for? He needed a condo so Cheating. he could record. I was told he, the condo was supposed to be for business, for a recording, to get this look, for the webinars and all that. That was what that was for, but little did I know, we Shoot. was out here living our best lives. <laughs> Whole full blown relationships. Duh. Okay, so I would want to say duh on that. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like if you have a a whole condo, you first of all, if you really want to I mean, the, yeah, it's like you could say duh, but again, we getting this from it's like you got to get it from her angle and where she's coming from. You know, being young, going into this type of monster, who knows how well he knew her mind to fuck with her mind. I mean, of course, deep down inside, she probably knew that something was going on. But again, she didn't want to be abandoned. She didn't want to be left. She didn't want to break up her family or her happy home that she, I guess, the facade. Yeah, right? and the way that she was living. Yeah. So, ugh. Do something. You got a 9,000 square foot house. You can put a whole studio in that 9,000 square right, foot house. Right, but no. Like, I remember uh, it was this one lady. She just kept getting, it's like her husband. It, it. Her husband was the type, he had a real nice job, making a lot of money, and he was cheating. Girl, the cheating was so bad where he would record himself having sex with these women. It, it sounded so like that's what he was doing. You know, that's why she was seeing it. It was so bad, though, that not only did the kids see it, I even saw it, because I was dating the girl that, um, she, he was her daddy. Uh-huh. That, but the mama, it's like she'd catch him cheating. She had threatened to leave. It got to a point one time she packed up her little bags, had about a dough, tried to leave, didn't do shit. It's like these men sometimes be knowing you ain't going no fucking work because she liked the way she was living. She liked living in that big so, house. So this is it. I want to know from the man's standpoint, what is the purpose of them keeping them around, torturing them? You should really check out that Priscilla. Uh, it, a lot of y'all, she kind of explains. She said she, she goes into talking about men and how they see women as resources. They see So when they get one, they see it as they own her. Like yeah, because it sounds like she was running a lot of shit behind the scene with yeah. his business. And it seems like she was smart when it came down to that. And that's probably one of the main reasons he held on to her. That in your mind, you have my kids, you are mine. I own you. <laughs> we have kids too loud. You know, there's all these things, the reason why that couldn't happen. Sure, you could have built the studio in the backyard of that bad boy. We there was a lot of space. <laughs> I, I imagine so in Atlanta, the nine thousand square foot house. I can only imagine what that backyard looked like. Ridiculous, <laughs> right? And so, um, yeah. So he had the condo to. It's supposed to be for business, but he spent more nights there than he did um, at home. So anyway, he ended up going back to the condo because. Um, I had said some things like as it relates to, to scripture that he didn't like agree with and all that. And it just turned into a big thing. And I was like, you need to be delivered. I just came I, and I, I learned a lesson. You just can't come at somebody and be like, you need to be delivered. So I learned a lesson um, in that. You said what? You learned that you can't tell somebody. You just you can't, you just can't be like, hey, you need to be delivered. You got demons. I didn't know that though. 
why can't you? Why uh, can't she? Maybe she about to explain it. Cause people, I mean, yeah, he gonna run away, but yeah, I think that's the thing. It's uh, it's like the shadow. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shine that mirror in front of him. Yeah, and so the thing is, a lot of times when people you know can't do the shadow work like when you try to make somebody do shadow work they get mad or they tell you that you're wrong so it take people for themselves to know or to learn and to find out okay this some shit i need to work on or like if people keep telling them something is an issue then they'll be like okay do i have a problem with this maybe i do have a problem with this but if you just try to do that you do get all type of reactions when you shine a mirror in front of somebody and they're not ready to do that shadow work yeah Probably you know because you yeah. got done in a lot in yeah your past. i have <laughs> Hey, Cause you, you, was, you was a new Christian. I was new. Yeah, you was new in this thing. I was new. I was just like, I ain't just got, got nothing to do with being stuff. Christian. It ain't got nothing to do with being Christian. It's just if them folks but ain't ready, we are in their world. So no, I'm just saying. Yeah, but it don't have anything to do with that. You cannot be a Christian and try to show somebody they shadow, and they probably gonna cuss your ass out. You may lose some friendships. You could be what another little demon, and you show <laughs> you show them they demon, and they fuck your ass. Up. Yes. <laughs> oh. This is okay to say, like, you need to be delivered. And you need to be delivered. This is why. And I know two people that can do it. So we need to figure it out so we can go. You can get delivered. I get delivered. Everybody's happy, right? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work out. Apparently, people get very upset. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And um, not only That'll do they work. get upset, they think you're crazy and, and, and you know, you'd have lost your mind. So I went through that. I said that, and then I'm crazy. He said, I'm crazy. Uh, they don't think you crazy. I think they just try to deflect or flip it on you or turn the fight, turn into a fight about something else. Yeah. Crazy and all these things. And I need to get some mental, I need to get a mental evaluation. He called my mom, yeah. which is how my mom got involved. He called my mom like, hey, you need to come check on her. And then my mom is calling me like, what's going on? And then I'm telling her all of it because at the time I didn't tell her all of the stuff that was going on. Oh, and now see? I'm telling her all of it because I'm like, okay, I don't have the capacity to deal with this. I got these two kids. I am not crazy. He has a demon inside of me, <laughs> you know, like a sex demon. Delivered. And I'm trying to help him to get delivered, you know. <laughs> you, oh, I, you can't come that aggressive. <laughs> um. So that was a learning lesson. I learned that in ministry. That was my first. That was my first. Uh, well, hold up, though. The way she telling the story. What if she telling it calm? But what if she was like a little demon up in there trying to tell him he need to be delivered? What if she took ropes and tried to tie it around his wrist no. and took holy water and was spraying it all over? You need to be delivered. Well, if she was spraying, then I would be she, like, "Bitch, you look, crazy." If she was throwing holy water, he probably needed it the way he been acting up all these fucking years. Yes, put it all over his penis. You see and look, and if she went crazy, he drove her fucking crazy. Did you see that uh that video where the girl she was in church? It was a black woman, and they were saying she had a sex demon, an oral oh. sex demon. He was spraying all uh, the uh, holy water. She was like, she was like, yes. Yeah. Spit out the semen. Spit out the semen. It was like she was sucking a... She was gagging over the mic or something. Yeah, no, she... she was like acting like she was sucking like an imaginary... Yeah, I could and not. And then he took the holy water. He was spraying it by her pom pom. She was like... <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, I went to the restroom and something white came out of it. Bitch, she probably she came from this scene. <laughs> Um, introduction into ministry. <laughs> that thing probably had her heart. <laughs> so. What brought you into Christianity <laughs> as an adult? Because you said when you were younger, you were introduced to it as a, when you were younger, but then you renewed your faith, recommitted. At what, what when was this? Um, so this was around the time I know we talked about how he got his hair cut by a, a, a girl that he had sex with. And it's around that time I enrolled in therapy I had three therapists at the time yeah. and it was around that time I was like okay there's something seriously wrong with me and I need to figure it out there's not a, I cannot go another year like in this condition and so I was just doing everything I'm like listen <laughs> whatever I can get into God is the and answer plus I have money so you right? can just go pay I'm for gonna what? try I'm gonna try whatever I could try like <laughs> yoga like what else you got <laughs> you know like 
God, God is the answer. So let me figure that out. Let me get in some. Let me get in Bible study. I'm calling my mom. Like when you, when is your, when is your Bible study group meeting? I need to get on a video call with y'all, you know, because I'm in Georgia, they're in Denver, and so I started doing that, and and um, I was like on and off with that a little bit, but then um, I started having some like weird dreams and things like that, where I felt like I always had to fight. And like I would go through the day, I'm like, oh, I feel like I have to fight, but I don't know what I'm fighting. Mm, that's good. Like I don't know what I'm fighting. And then my mom was like, Okay, I was waiting for you to get to this point. Yeah. And she's just sitting here waiting the whole time, reading me my whole life. And mm -hmm. she's like, Okay, there is a spiritual war going on. There it is. And you need to decide who you're gonna serve. Yeah. That's what she said to me. I was like, What? <laughs> what do you mean? I already served Jesus. She's like, You need to decide who you're gonna serve because you have not been serving my Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. Yeah, because okay. it's almost like, are you serving? And this is, again, me just thinking in the way that they're thinking. It's like, are you serving money and this lifestyle you're trying and to hang him. on to and this man? Yeah. Or are you trying to serve Christ? You know, like if yeah. I was a Christian, that's what I would think. That's yeah. how I would think about it. Mm -hmm. And she's choosing money, him, and that lifestyle. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's good. once I started pursuing, like taking this, when she said that, I was like, okay. This is this is real. And then our daughter started having some like night terrors. Um, but it was some crazy like um, paranormal activity type mm -hmm. of stuff happening in our house. Like when I say stuff moving, when I say. Hold up, hold up. Ooh, I'm going to tell you what this made me think about, though. Y'all remember taco story time? When she was having that domestic violence with her girlfriend. Oh, yeah. It was so toxic that it's like almost like they conjured some negative energy, demons, however y'all look at it. Yeah. And the same thing started happening in their house. Um, and this just so happened, I think, to be in Atlanta. She said stuff was just moving, just all type of paranormal activity. Yeah. Probably because of all that toxicity that was going and on and that in the anger house. and that rage and yes. fussing and you all that yeah demons uh in your home when you yeah. do stuff like that it's crazy say lights turning on by itself when i seen oh. our daughter literally get picked up out of her bed there's a camera in the room and on the floor like nobody's in her room i believe in all that nobody's in her room yeah. and i was like what do i do besides calling the name of jesus i don't know so that's what really started because yeah. i'm like okay now my child is being attacked this i got to take it serious it's yeah. one thing with me but now my child is being attacked she's one and a half two years old at the time just let you know that house was bad it was bad inside that and house. then she wasn't in a good place either yes. it's like she was probably at a very low frequency yeah just inviting all the type of entities that like that yeah of... and the thing is some people feel like this can't affect kids but kids know more than you think they know yeah. they they come into this world so smart and, they see and have things. awareness and then they can tell like it, it's been times that my parents argued when i was little and i knew they were arguing so it's like kids always or uh, had a head to the door or they definitely be aware of what's going on mm -hmm. and so i started really going down that path and i didn't really tell him because he was you know he's yeah. at the condo yeah working <laughs> so, yeah, so he's at you know he's providing and i'm out give here that, give me that nice little soft life you live in. yes mm -hmm. i'm like yes you so know? you can have three therapists and and exactly listen shout out to all Crazy. three of them therapists <laughs> they had their work cut out for them and yes so <laughs> and so this what the soft life come with what was the breaking point for you to get up and leave and go to denver so when he said when he said i was crazy because i'm like you need to be delivered and we need to go now and this is what needs to happen so he called <laughs> you your know? mom and you said forget it i'm going i was like i took a couple of days it took a couple of days and i was like okay i feel like i can't just leave so i'm like okay we need to go to therapy we need to work this out and i'm texting him because he's like not answering my calls he's like he if you come yeah. to the condo i'm gonna call the police on you um all these i'm like okay i said i was texting him i'm like okay we have to figure out how to work this out um the best way for us to do this is for you to come here and we can figure figure it out like and he was basically like, I'm not coming back there. Like, I would rather be separate, separated from you than to be miserable um, with you in the same house. And I was like, mom, my bags are packed. 
when can you be here? And she was on the flight the next morning, flew in, and we drove. Or I can't even say we drove. I drove like 80 miles an hour <laughs> to All Denver. All the way from Atlanta from, to Denver. Yes. How long is that trip? It's a 24-hour drive. I drove the first 15 hours pretty much straight through. She had to force me to stop driving. You were just motivated on adrenaline. I was, I was, yeah, adrenaline, and I was just, like, so upset. And then I was kind of scared, too, because I'm like, I can't believe, like, I'm actually doing this. He's going to freak out when he realizes that I'm gone because I didn't say anything. I didn't send uh, – my phone was actually – Right, my, my phone was actually turned off at the time because there was, like, a little financial crisis that started happening around that time, too. So my phone was actually turned off. So I was like, this is perfect. You know, just slide by that financial crisis. had your phone cut off. My phone was cut off at well, the time. Well, it was a 9,000-square-foot house, and, and your phone get cut off. He was working at the condo, so. I bet his fucking phone was on. It could have been a financial crisis, just uh, uh, oversight of okay. the bill being paid. Yeah. Because you can't have a 9,000 square foot. So he might have had multiple um, phones. Like, not multiple phones on the same account, but multiple accounts. And her stuff got turned off. Which he probably didn't care. I don't know. I wasn't have. even involved with the finance. Why? Because of the kids. He's selfish. Very selfish. So that's what I, I've been told. So You've I, been told? Yeah, because I wasn't involved in this. He so just told I, you what? It's a financial crisis. I, he was just I, pushing her It was a financial crisis from what I understand. Define financial crisis. Define it. <laughs> It's like she couldn't even see stuff for herself. She just had to take him at his word. Mm -hmm. So he just said it's a financial crisis. Yeah. It's like she it's like she always have to throw her hand up and be like, okay, whatever. Define it because there was sure a Lamborghini. That's what I'm saying. And Bentley sitting up here doing car videos with a Bentley. There was a lot of stuff. So I don't know where it all went. But we had a financial crisis, and my phone was turned off. So at that time, it was turned off. And um, well, how so long was it cut off? About a couple of hours. Days. See, I, I don't understand that. Days, and so it kind of worked out because then he can immediately call me, and it's, my mom's not answering the phone. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> but by the time I actually got to Denver, he was already there. So. He was? He was. He flew. Uh, he flew down there while y'all was driving. He, but it's a financial crisis, but he got him a plane ticket to get what the fuck he wanted. He flew, mm -hmm, and he was at my mom's old address because he had looked her stuff up online and went to her old address. Didn't realize that she had moved, and so he was at the wrong address, and he and I called him when I got there. And I was like, okay, at minimum, I could call him when I'm actually there. Yeah. Let him know. He's like, you know, I need, like, like, let's talk. He's out standing outside. I'm outside. I'm like, outside where? And it's snowing. And he's like, I'm outside. Let's talk. And I'm like, um, she doesn't even live there anymore. And I'm like, uh, I don't think I should be coming out right now. Like, I just got off the road. We just got off the road. And my mom is in the background like, you just got off the road. You are not going anywhere. And then she's on the phone with um, <laughs> someone. And she, they're like, uh-uh, you, mm -mm, get off that phone. Mm -mm. He can wait. Right, and which then brought in a whole nother dynamic because it's like mm -hmm. um, your mom mm -hmm. is controlling your yep. behavior and your actions, and she's keeping you away and telling you what to say and what to do. So then that became a whole nother dynamic, and I'm just like head spin. So how long did it take for you to connect with him while he was in Denver? We met the we met the next day. We met at IHOP, and with the kids, my mom dropped dropped me and the kids off. Um, and he was like, how long are you going to be here? See, and that'd be kind of annoying, too, because I, I know I had a uh, situation like that. Trying to be the savior for somebody. Yeah, it's like you do all that to try to go save your family member just for, you know. The, Them to link back up. Yeah, just think, mama flew out, you spent her money, we don't know her money looking like, and then she had to ride 24 plus hours in this car to get back home and they driving through the snow and all type of stuff. Yeah. Just for you to go meet back up with him so he can re reprocess his spell that he got on you or something. Yeah, it's like, it's not really 
I, I don't think people have it made up in their mind that they're done. Like you said, I think they're doing it as a punishment type of yeah, thing. Yeah. And when you saw it involving family and friends, it's like it's just not cool. It's, it's like figure that shit out on your own before you start getting other people involved. When you know you done done, then get other and people involved. I think involved. that's probably what the mama was trying to do. She That's probably why the mama was like, I was waiting to tell you this, but now I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Maybe the mama thought that she, she was, was done. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, a couple of weeks, you know, still not saying like, I know, you know, about all this stuff that's going on. And um, he was like, well, like, you just going to leave? Like, how do you, you just going to leave like that and not say anything? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like you decided you wanted to stay at the condo. I can't stay in this house by myself. Um, and so he's like, so you're just going to keep the kids away from me? And I'm like. I'm not even trying to do that, but there I take care of them pretty much by myself, been doing it by myself for since they were born, essentially, mostly as far as the main care of them um, outside of financially, which apparently. That, well, he got that. That's child support. That's a big deal. If you provide financially, that is mm -hmm. that's the only job you have. <laughs> so <laughs> I did not know that. I'm learning, though. <laughs> And define, so, <laughs> define, <laughs> provide, define. Divide, right? And so, yeah. So, and so he's there. How long did you stay in Denver before coming back? I was there for eight months, and he traveled there almost every, if it not every week, every other week. He was there every month. So, what was your plan? Chasing, I I was just trying to survive at that point. By the time I got to Denver, I was like unhealthily like skinny, like I was malnourished. Were I hadn't you depressed? been eating. I was depressed. I was malnourished. Like literally, I, I'll try to, I'll try to pull up a picture of my phone so you can see it. But I was malnourished. Like they had to like force feed me to like get me to back to a state where I could just eat properly. Why? Um, all the stuff that I had been dealing holding with in. and holding in. Like I was dying. Had I not left Georgia at the time, I would have died in Georgia. Like I had been in the hospital. They can't figure out what's going on with me. I'm bleeding out of places. They're like, I don't know why you're bleeding like this. There was so much stress and stuff going on with my body at the time. Had I not left at the time that I did, I, I think I would not be here right now. Oh Lord, Lord Jesus. And so, and so I stayed there for eight months and then literally my family that knew that I was there because everybody in my family didn't know I was there. And they were feeding me <laughs> to make sure I got back to health, helping me with the kids, um, taking that on so I could really just do my therapy and just recover mentally and emotionally. And I started going to one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, um, Bible studies, session, counseling, and really unpacking some things from a spiritual aspect and going back into the spiritual aspect of like not having the father with the abandonment and the rejection and then learning about how that translates into like Jesus was rejected. He, he was abandoned and all that. Like I had to relearn all that, all that happened in that eight, eight in months. that eight months. And um, from there I started journaling, not yeah, journaling to the Holy Spirit and giving him all the details. And this is where the Lord began to speak to me like, hey, you need to write out all these things that you've seen that you've been trying to tell such and such you've been trying to tell that you've been telling the therapist you've been telling that all of them that's great but they can't take the pain that is in your soul they can't take that out of you yeah you know only i can take that out of you and so i began to do that and then i have literally notebooks notebooks of the trauma and the pain and the videos like the details and all of that that i have seen all of it of giving that to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I invite you into this. I'm giving you the details of this down to like the tattoo, the mold, the this, like all the details. I'm giving you all of that. What tattoo? I'm saying like of what I've seen of the women, of oh, the I've people. Oh, seen everybody's body parts. Right, right. How and, does that feel? I want I want to spend a, a little time on that because that's some serious trauma. When it happens the first time, it, like I said, I've been in environments where I've walked in and seen stuff that I didn't want to see. So what, what did that do to you? I became a shell of myself. I didn't know who I was. I actually have a couple posts on my page where I was like, I have a post that says, I knew her body better than I knew my own. Stop, let that sit there. You said 
you knew another woman's body better than you knew your own? Uh, yes, several, several women. I know several, I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. And um, I spent a lot of time, like I was, I, I went in such a, a deep hole where I was like studying these women. I would go to their profiles and I would study their pages and like what they wear. I knew when they were meet, when they had met up. So I've, I watched their videos of them having sex. So I would try to imitate that and recreate that in our relationships so that he could choose me and want me. And um, that is a low point to be. And I'm, I'm tearing up a little bit because that, I hate that I even got to a point where that was a thing. But that, that it was, it was just that. And it was like she was trying to get him to choose her when all along she needed to choose herself. Yeah. You know, and I know she says she's tearing up, but this this is her story. Yeah. This is part of her journey. And this is why I always tell people, you know, a lot of times when things are placed on your plate, it's because you can't handle it. Mm -hmm. But not only that, this is supposed to be a testimony for her to give to other people yep. so that they can learn from these things. So they can see, like, okay, I'm in this type of situation how can I get out yeah, of this? Because imagine the amount of women that got snatched up from a damaged place by predators like yeah. Derek Jackson. And they're currently in her situation right now and just hearing her story. She just watching his podcast, just watching us react. Yeah. That can help a lot of women figure mm -hmm. out how to get out of the situation and choose themselves. Yeah, and on the flip side, sometimes in situations like this, guys can actually convince the woman to be with another woman because they desperately want the man that bad that they will do anything. And I'm shocked he did not get her to be with one of his other sexual partners. Because she I mean, seemed she like she haven't talked about it yet. Yeah, she seemed like she was willing to go the distance. Yeah. So I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. I lost, completely lost myself. I became a shell of myself. I tried to imitate their hair, their actions, even um, sexual things that I had seen him doing with them. I tried to recreate that in our life um, when, when we were engaged. And, and none of it amounted to anything. And so I just became more like depressed, more withdrawn because it's like I can't share this with him because then he's going to leave. Right. Because I'm still operating off of that abandonment and all of that. And so it's so crushing and I can't there's not really words to put like what happens to you when you see that. And you don't just see it one time, but you see it multiple times and you see it multiple times over years, years what that does and that and then you compound onto that rape trauma you compound onto that daddy issue like Whew, there's no child. way for anybody to survive that mentally and emotionally without god <laughs> like intervening if he is a true like narcissist or something like that i wonder what is he doing now i know he got to be making you know how when we see like a person speak out against their uh abuser then they start them and then comment below like what is he doing for work now like is he working at a call center at mcdonald's like what is he doing because i thought he's no not still he... making videos so people still listening to the <laughs> i dude? thought i saw something a while ago where he was still trying to make videos comment below are they lighting his ass up in the comment section right now especially with her coming out with this yes, interview this video blew on blowing up in some way to, t to literally pluck that out of you. It's so crushing. There's no breath in my body. What brought you back? Eight months you were away. You're restoring yourself not only physically because you're malnutrition at this time. Uh, you're about to lose your mind. You got three therapists. You're now participating in your mother's um, Bible study groups and and all that. So you've been edified on the spiritual level. Eight months away, he's coming in to see you and the kids. What made you say, I'm going to go back and I'm about to recommit to this marriage? I gave him a list of 13 things that I needed to recommit. I have fasted and prayed on it. And I'm like, Lord, if I go back, there's some things that I need. I gave him a list of 13 things that absolutely needed to happen. Do you remember some of the things on that list? 
Yes, the first thing was that we needed to have spiritual, like, counsel. Like, we had to engage for a minimum of six months. He had to schedule time for me and the children within his work schedule. And he had to create the schedule, not me create it for him. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, he had to change his numbers because um, he had two phones at the time. He had to change both of those numbers. See, he had two phones. This nigga still making videos. Look at this. Why smart women are usually single. Because they avoided niggas like you. Man, he's still making videos. I shit. told you. Oh my goodness. Who, what dumb dumbs listening to well, him? Well, I thought we were supposed to be hearing about the bunny. Yeah, well, we got damn. <laughs> this a two hour video. Then he had to get rid of all of the women. That means, like, anybody that he had had any type of relationship with whether it was sexual conversation or it was actually physical, they had to go, all of them. Um, that we had to renew our vows. And um, those are a couple off the top of my mind. Why was it important mind. to renew your vow? Because I feel like we, we built it on a faulty foundation. Good. Our marriage was built on a faulty foundation, so we had to reset that thing. And um, the vows that we I took want his were not necessarily rooted in God. You know, at the time from either side. Yeah. And so we had to really um, reset that. And I, again, I spent some time in fasting and prayer to develop that list with the yeah. Lord. And it's like, okay, this is what needs to happen. And so he did not do that immediately, which is why I spent eight months away. But towards the end, he started coming into doing a lot of those things. And then he um, he started pursuing um one of the deliverance minister ministers that I had told him about, he started flying everywhere this the this minister was, and um, I could see that visually, like I could watch it on YouTube. You know, I'm seeing no. him there, and I'm seeing him get some deliverance, which he did, and I'm like, yes, Lord, you're answering my prayer. Okay, I can feel I can feel good about coming back now. And um, again, this is against like my mom and other the yeah. other people in the Bible studies. Like they're like, uh, you need to wait and let it let him continue to go through the process. I'm like, you know, I'm grown. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I can do this. And so I came back um, off of that, and I be I believed in that, and I knew that he was like on the path, and we were re very heavily connected with um, some people in the church that were helping us and all that. So. And I would say, fair enough. Like you, you're 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 the wife. Uh, your mom, of course, she's trying to cover you. She, she, you know, was going to advocate for you. But at the end of the day, you had to make that decision to say, because at, at the end of the day, it's not healthy for a wife or a husband to be living away from each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? You work through those problems with each other. But I do believe that at the state that y'all were in, that he did need to actually show and tell um, and to prove that he wanted to fight for the marriage and so you saw that and you felt the unction to go back yeah. and then so when you got back what happened when we got back when, when and i got back give me back, time frame so this was in 2020 20 or 2021 now okay so this is 2020 i came back um we actually so when i came back i didn't go back to georgia i this was part of the parameters like we need to leave georgia georgia is not the place for us there's too much too much access Way emphasis on access, access. <laughs> lots of it open, yeah. right yeah. and so um i was like i'm really feeling texas um i feel like it's equal distance between both of our families as far as travel time um i'm thinking houston but he was getting dallas so i was like okay like let's go okay so we're going to dallas so he ended up packing up the whole house pretty much in georgia and um after i told him he needed to get rid of a lot of things and um <laughs> and then um I met him here in Texas and we started here in Texas and it was like, it felt great. Like it felt good. We had people here um, in the church that we were meeting with regularly, regularly. And um, we were looking for different places, um, like where we wanted to settle down. We started in Plano and went to a couple of different places. And so um, I felt like it was like on track. Of course, there's always issues, right? We're, we're still recovering from whole trauma, right? Yeah. Like we're not going to skip past the fact that there was all these women involved in the marriage right. that I'm still dealing with. On top of now I'm actively unpacking the rape trauma at the same time that I'm dealing with the betrayal trauma from the infidelity, like all of it's happening at the same time. And so um, he was very supportive. I feel like he was very supportive in um, understanding and like, okay, what do I need to do? 
and all these 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 things that I couldn't have asked like for more of, you know, so. And then when did the infamous bonnet video, when did that take place? When so was he was, outed? That was 2021. So that everything was, was going so everything was going pretty good. Overall, yeah. Overall, every, y'all overall got, everything y'all was new start. Yes, overall it was a new start. Um, we're still just kind of unpacking just all of the stuff, right? But and he's so, doing the work, y'all. Yeah, he's y'all doing, have a spiritual oversight that's yeah, helping y'all walk through the, some stuff. He's he, spending time with the kids now. Yes. Uh, he's he, scheduling time with the kids. Uh, um, did y'all renew y'all vows? We did not. We did not. That was one of the things that did not happen. And, you know, that was something like, okay, we need to put it on the priority list and it just never it never happened clearly but right. um that did not happen but all the other things were a little i'm like okay you know we can get there all these other things Changed are important his numbers, both his numbers he changed both of the numbers but apparently people still had access so <laughs> <laughs> did not know that you know apparently iphone has some weird um technology where you can have did like they, these secret messages oh for real i listen i don't know i don't have an iphone so <laughs> But apparently, there's a thing, there's a feature on there. So, <laughs> there's, a fe- there's a feature on there. There is. So, but yeah, so, you know, he was doing some things that I was like, okay, we can work with this. There's progress in this area. I don't expect perfection. You know, I expect progress in tangible pro- progress. So, would you be okay you with perfection? I, I'm not messing with. 10 women right now but i got about no, two no 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 That's so progress, it was ain't it? right 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 so <laughs> that was our, progress right define progress which i did <laughs> surprisingly i was very specific i said there zero none <laughs> right because we do have to be very specific here we cannot leave any blurred lines or nothing like that i ha- i did actually clarify to him directly i said I mean, like when I say zero, I mean zero, right? Because then we have to define sex, right? <laughs> okay, oral sex is still sex, which was not counted as sex for some reason in other conversations. So <sighs> we had to get very specific. So I was very clear. Hey, I mean, when I say zero, I mean nothing. I mean, like I don't want like no no friend, not everybody. I don't care how what business connection they are i don't care what their status is i don't care how many followers they have yeah. i don't care all of them need to be gone facts and so um but for, for everything was going great f- from it was going from it was 2020 going well. to when well everything was going well until overall until um until the, the tasha k came out with the with all the stuff and that was in March of 2021. And so um, from there, it was just like all, everything just came back up to the surface again, like was fresh, that new open to you? wounds. But when she, when she revealed in 2021, was that, was you blindsided by that? No, because I had already, he had already confessed to the 11 women that he had been with, which the, the two that were on there or the three that were on there had already been on his list of people that he gave me and um we had already been working on dealing with it and all of that and so that information wasn't new but what what happens is that you know it un it uncovers that wound all over again (laughs) right because now not not only on a private level but now on a public level and so now it's like open wound all over again and then at that time just weeks, two days before that, we found out we were expecting our third child. Literally the day it, it was released um, on that platform, we were at his uh, stepfather's um, wake. And so we're dealing with grief, we're dealing with expecting our next child, and now we're dealing with, with this all at the same time. And then it's like that following Monday, we're on camera, and I'm like, it's a helmet of salvation. <laughs> yes this is what's needed right now that's all i got right <laughs> all i know what is it's say? a spiritual helmet attack <laughs> helmet is helmet. that's all i got it's protects your mind right now my mind is being attacked and i need something better than therapy <laughs> you know what a lot of people don't understand this too um is that you're in the midst of trauma a lot of times people people can never most people can identify with what you were going through they may have dealt with somebody that have cheated on them 
but they've never dealt with somebody that was cheating on them. They got, you know, two million. How many combined followers four, does four, he have? Over four million. Four million between Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. and YouTube. Four million. Now, here's this private woman who has always been shy her whole life. Uh, she's been the quiet girl sitting in the college campus. And now she has always played, you know, back office to, to his brand. And now she's thrust. The first time we ever hear her. First time we ever hear her was in this video dealing with trauma of him saying, hey, listen, yes, I may have been in a pro, I may have done this, this, this. And it's the first time we see this woman in front of this large, vast world of judgmental people saying, why she got Man. her hair like that? Why she look like, why she look like, why, you know, and now they're I see why he cheating. You know, some people probably was like, I see why he cheating. She looking like that. I know when I saw her, I was like, she brainwashed. Yeah. I thought she was in some sort of cult or something. Yeah. Or giving some people, giving him an excuse. Oh, we got to rebuke people who do that. Giving people an excuse, a married man an excuse. Well, I see why he cheated on her then. Look what she looked like. She probably yeah. the type of woman that didn't keep herself up. No one knew that you were pregnant at that time. No one knew that y'all had just came uh, back from a, a funeral and a wake. No one knows that. No one, no one knew that you had been covering him all these years up until this point, being this, this supportive wife, being this woman who was not some girl that was like, I don't want to have sex with my husband. You're saying, I want to perfect this thing. I'm over here trying to model what these other women are doing so that I can give my man the best sex so he can choose me and leave them alone. No right. one knows the inner struggle that you're going through. No. no one knew the abuse that you had uh, come through. Haven't overcome it yet, but you have come through it. No one knew that here it is this woman who never wanted to be in this spotlight is now sitting right here in front of the world being picked apart. Right. And that's the reason, Denea, I said I want to make sure that I had a makeup artist come make you look absolutely beautiful and, and like you needed it. But I said I want to make sure that they didn't have nothing to pick you apart from. I, I, and I appreciate that. I appreciate all the care and the just basic human dignity and respect that you've shown me, which apparently is hard. Oh, dang, so he got, his crew got her together as far as like her face? Well, that's what the man just said now. She can do her own makeup? I mean, everybody don't know how to do makeup. It's maybe, like... Or maybe, like, the way you do your makeup, maybe you have to do a certain way on camera, like where it it's looks just, right on camera. I mean... Maybe that's what he means? Probably so, I'm but... I'm thinking that, like, if you went on something, you know how to do your own shit, so. But that's only because I wear makeup. If she don't wear makeup, she don't know how to do makeup. And he didn't want her acne and stuff showing like that. Well, not necessarily. He just wanted her to be presented in her best light. At the end of the day, because when her husband stuck her on camera, that's not how he had her presented. He didn't have her sitting up there in her best light. But I think, like, people, like how he said, um, people were saying, oh, I see why he cheated on her. I think those type of comments probably came from ignorant people. So those I mean, same type of ignorant people will still say still can find stuff to say about her even done up well i mean they're gonna find something to say just based off of this story that she's telling mm -hmm. because it's hard for some people to even fathom dealing with something like this for so long yeah and just think about us like when we saw it we weren't thinking oh i see why he cheated on her we were thinking like you said she's brainwashed yes like, i was like what is, is happening or he must he might have got her when she was damaged and and girl i didn't know what i thought mind. she started leaning on the church trying to get through this stuff because it was just she was speaking very churchy yeah hard to get just being me for whatever reason that is and so you know all of the public scrutiny that i endured in that time i'm that like just added on it's almost like a head spin it's like what is going on I don't even know how to respond or react. Um, all I know is that my mental and emotional state is right now in danger. And if that goes, then everybody's going to die. Yeah. Literally, physically. Yeah. Had had I not had the helmet of salvation or at least had knew that scripture, yeah. um, I really I really would have committed suicide. And I'm, I'm, oh, that's the state that I was. Um, 
at in that moment. This and is I, embarrassing. I'm yeah. I can imagine, like he said, she dealing with this on the back end. Now it's like, and we all know how Tasha K get, baby. It's gloves off. She gonna make sure you know every detail. You ain't gonna question shit when she finished with your ass. Yeah. So it's like, now she's having to deal with it. You know how I said people, they don't think further into the future of what is this going to look like if it comes out and I'm truly embarrassed. They don't think about that. They think like eventually they're going to get through it. They don't think about if the spotlight is just shine on this whole ugly ass situation and that's what Tasha K did and that's probably why she felt like she wanted to vomit because well, that's K. how I would have felt. I would have felt like I was going to throw up. I would she, have not been able to sit on that camera. She better make sure all her little shit together because you already see what happens to people like that when they like look at Wendy Williams. Mm -hmm. She better make sure all her little shit together. Yeah. But it also makes me nervous when Danae was saying like everybody would have died. It almost sounded like she she was saying she was prepared to take her, her kids, and him out. Yeah. That's what it sounded like. It sounded like she just wasn't mentally stable. Yeah. Like, that was the last, the last little bit of sanity she had. It's like that was being stripped away. Uh, right this, before this everybody's really eyes. Sad. It is sad. Damn. With the child, right? And that embellishes all the emotions that you already have just outside Gone of that. Gone through postpartum uh, depression I, twice with the other severe, kids. And here you are right now dealing with all this. Severe postpartum depression. I'm pregnant again. Just found out I was pregnant again. And I'm like, Lord, I, I mean. It's like, for real, for real, I'm not saying no other women deal with bullshit. But I can only speak for what I've witnessed in my life and myself. Black women. Like, I see why they say we are so strong, but look yeah. at the type of shit black women be dealing with. Yeah. Whew. I mean, when am I going to get a break? And you know what? The only thing that came to me in that moment was um, Job when he was getting attacked you know, his finances, his marriage and all that. Like, that's the what, and that's where the whole helmet of salvation thing came from. It's like, I'm recognizing this as a spiritual attack. I understand clearly we have some real serious things that are going on, but everything right now, my mental health, my health is being attacked. My child, the seed in me is being attacked. If I don't pull through this, not only am I going to die, my child is going to die. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I can't, I cannot get to a place to, allow that to happen and that's the scripture that that really fueled me and then like literally i knew two scriptures which was that in helmet of salvation so i went with the helmet of salvation and um <laughs> i'm proud of you queen i'm proud of you i'm proud of you because at the end of the day if that's all you had to hold on to for your sanity to be able to um be present in your kid's life um there was a uh that that post for Mother's Day that that uh, he made <laughs> he made a post uh, acknowledging you and he made a statement of saying in times where you didn't even didn't have the strength to show up for yourself of course you showed up for your kids um, how'd you feel about that oh what? you know something um, I <laughs> I did not know that was him. I did not know that was him who made the post. Watching I Am Zoe, when he had did Missing Monday, but I heard him read the post, and he was like, are you fucking kidding? He was like, this is nothing to feel special about. So, okay, I heard the post, and yes, it, it was very disgusting. It was disgusting. Like, that's how I felt. Like, what is going on here? I was completely confused. I'm like, somebody some, somebody sit me down and explain this. We need to define a lot of things. Um, you didn't look at that as, wow, he celebrated me on Mother's Day? And she shouldn't have. No. And so that's where I'm like, okay, should I feel bad about that? Like, this is like a real internal doubt. Like, should I, am I ungrateful? Am I, like, these are the questions that I'm going through, like, real time, real life. Like, I don't. I don't feel that. I feel confused about it, and I feel like, like, was that really for me? Because when I'm looking at it, you know, I was blocked for months um, until I, apparently just recently, which I didn't even know I was unblocked. Unblocked from what? From social from media? From his social media. Uh, he blocked me on everything. 
And so I didn't even know I was unblocked. He didn't tag me in it. So I'm like, was that for me? And then my name is DA apostrophe capital N A I A. He didn't even have the decency to spell, your name <laughs> spell right. my name right. And so I'm like, okay, am I being nitpicky because I want my name to be spelled right after all these well, years? Well, I mean, it is your, it is your, your, your husband. I mean, I'm I mean sure but I don't even know. I mean, can we define can we define all these things? Is that even a thing to act to <laughs> Tell be? me can we define husband? Right. Can we is that I don't even know if that's a thing to ha expect your husband to spell your name right. So, yeah. um I question I have questions about it. And so I have real, real questions about it. Do I see on in a general sense that it could be viewed as sweet and all that? Yes. I can recognize that, but then there's so many things like on the back end that is not acknowledged and that have been going on. So I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me. So now I'm just confused, and I need somebody to explain it to me. You said he didn't tag you, so it, it he couldn't have been for you. He didn't tag me in it. I didn't even know about the post until Monday, like at 9 p.m. My best friend is messaging me. We're having a conversation, and she was like, girl, I almost hollered when I seen his post. And I was like, what post? <laughs> and she was like, you didn't see the post? I'm like, he blocked me on everything. I ain't see nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I'm not following, I'm not stalking his pages. Like yeah. I'm living, I'm trying to build my stuff over here. I'm everything new, right? And so she's like, hold please. So she sends me a screenshot and I'm like, what? Yeah, they posted it on the shade room. They, um, they, it didn't go as, as planned because a lot of people saw right through it. A lot of people were mad at it. They was like, uh, you made her a single mother because he talked about, you know, you've been a, a mother, whatnot, and said, you know, imagine this backhanded uh, compliment. You've done all this. You drug this woman through. The, and they kept the part that they kept uh, referencing was the part about uh, you being able to show up for yourself at times when you couldn't show. I don't want to uh, butcher yeah. what he said, but it was something about the uh, being able to show up for yourself at times when it was hard for so you. So he's referencing, okay, this is how, like, crazy this is he's referencing the post where i just told you guys about where um i knew her body better than i knew my own and i had made a post and i'm like testifying like all the things i went through and all of the demonic spirits that i allowed into myself like with just trying to do all the things that i was doing and i said how it affected how it affected me and that little segment of his post was referencing that even down to our daughter like i had a I had some issues like just like with the complexion of our daughter because that was the type of woman that he would go after and I'm not dark like super dark skinned woman and our daughter's like a little chocolate little princess she has it you know and I'm just like how does she look like the women that he wants wow that's deep how does she look like the women that he he wants and he desires and he loves like you know like I don't understand it's like they had her even though I carried her <gasps> You know what I'm saying? And so Hold I had on. to work the, the out. Now you got to you gotta let that sit. You can't go. <laughs> you said they had her even though you had her? They had her even though I carried her. That's what I felt like for a long time. I had to really sit down. and Because she, she, her skin tone represents the type of women that he would cheat on you with? Yes. Oh, wow. So he actually cheated with chocolate drops. Usually the men be going after them racially ambiguous or white women. He actually wanted a chocolate drop. Boy, Lord knows I love me some chocolate. <laughs> some chocolate drops. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. And so there, then well, it just played on the... I hope she really worked through that because we don't need another mother out here like disliking their child because of something like this you know so i hope she really does get the therapy that she need so that she won't be looking at her daughter and like her daughter grow up and be beautiful and you know she's spiteful towards her because that is the thing yeah the rejection and the abandonment <sighs> and to not like choose me what is there about me right our daughter even has everything that you like search for or at least um per preference yeah in a one in a woman now every woman wasn't dark skin clearly but there was a preference in a type and a lot of them were and so even our daughter came out in that preference and i'm like 
you know, and that, and that I feel like the Lord did that intentionally so that I could really deal with that. Um, I could really deal with that aspect and, he, and, and be able to teach my daughters because I have two girls now, but be able to teach them and one's lighter and one's darker. <laughs> right. So I, I, I had the experience of being in this weird world where I'm trying to be other, these other women and, and all these things, but I had to really sit back and deal with that. It affected my, I feel like my ability to mother her and to nurture her and to just have that mother daughter relationship that I always desired, but I didn't know how to get there because all this mm -hmm. stuff was in the way. And so I had started um, telling him about that and trying to be vulnerable because when you decide to come back, you gotta be vulnerable still, even though it's scary. And so I had started telling him that. So he referenced that in his, um, mother's day post and so i'm like i don't know how to rest i really don't know how to respond to this i don't know that it was for me per se as much as it may have been for you know image like that's how i feel like this is me working it out um this is me working it out and he did behind the scenes he did he did give me a big thing of flowers and a card um but he didn't say any of those things to me directly so i'm like i don't I don't understand. And he gave that to you at a at a at your son's, at son's birthday, birthday birthday party. Yeah, at our son's birthday party. The day before Mother's Day. Yeah. Um who oh Lord Jesus. So let's go back. You're recording this video. How did the video come about? Did he say, Hey, I need to record this video. I want you to be a, a part of it. I want you to stand by your man. Like what No, happened? he didn't coerce me into making the video. He asked me like would I feel comfortable? He's like, Do you would you feel comfortable? Because I don't want you to do something you're not comfortable with. And I'm like, I feel like I have to do this because I decided to come back and I've been I've been putting pressure on you to make a stand for me. So if I'm gonna put pressure on you to make a stand for me, I need to sit up here and be in the fire with you yeah right so like it's only i signed up for the worst the better and the worst and all yeah. that right so here's the worst and we are here and do i like it no but he didn't coerce me to 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 do it i made the decision like okay i'm gonna do it especially since i've been putting this pressure on you to make a stand for me so if you're gonna if this is the way we're making a stand this is how we're doing it um so there wasn't a whole lot of preparation time again we did it like the following monday we the funeral the wake was on friday we went to the funeral saturday we drove back um we drove um back on sun through sunday monday we're sitting there recording like there's no sleep we're still grieving you know i'm whole i'm whole pregnant just found out i was pregnant like still got to make a doctor's appointment just to confirm the viability of it whole eight weeks pregnant at that point didn't even know that but <laughs> um so you know, it was a lot going it's on. It's like we have to make we have to we have to do something because, you know, this is getting out of control and this is our source of income. So financial crisis on top of all of the other things. Right. So that's again, that's where I told you the Lord just brought me to Job. financial crisis, house is being marriage is being attacked children are being attacked, right? I'm pregnant, so my child is being, my children are being attacked. Um, mental and emotional state being attacked. All these things are being attacked. And when I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, Satan has asked for permission to attack us. And there he has legal grounds and rights because this has all been, you know, we've been doing our own thing yep, yep. in here. And so this is a different type of battle than the average person would think or even the average Christian would think to think like, oh, all these areas are being attacked. Like get off of social media and go see a therapist. Well, the therapist is not going to save my mental and emotional state right now. Only Jesus is, you know, <laughs> so. So you sat down, you recorded that video. Yes. You didn't prep. You didn't. You had what was that? Some people say it's a bonnet. Some people you say it's a beret. Which one was it? It was a beret. It's actually a hat. Okay. Um, I had on a hat. Um, I was, that was the day I was having like morning sickness. I was just like exhausted. And it was like, we have to get this done though. Like there was an urgency in like, okay, we have to get this, this done. We have to get ahead of this. We don't have a PR person. <laughs> like we have to, we have to do something. So I'm like, okay, you know, help me get through it. He made a video before me and him got on there. And I think he took that down because yep. people were coming after yeah. him. But I was like, I had walked into the office while he was recording that and basically it was like okay redo but with us together uh, you know and um so there wasn't a whole lot lot of prep into that but after the fact i was like okay let's prep he bought this little 
um, media kit person, or I don't even know what you call it, but it's a person that helps you content creator. prepare for these types of things and it's like coaching, like you got to sit up and you got to like, oh, lean. Yeah, well, no, you got to lean, you gotta lean forward and, you know, like smile. You don't want to wear white on the camera. And, you know, I'm like, what? Like, why, do they think stuff like that really still work with the public these days? <laughs> it's like the public just want to see realness and they can tell yeah, when you're like, trying to get over. We're so emotionally intelligent these days because we're able to watch people. 24 7 on all these different internet platforms we can tell when you bullshitting and we can tell when you are being genuine i'm shocked he didn't already have a pr person with him being maybe the as big as he was of the pr person or the person who was coaching them and so they don't just completely just screw everything up which it sounds like he had already did with that first video <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> You know, y'all know this is my first time sitting in front of anybody's camera. Like, I haven't even spoken on camera. You tell me y'all had a media training person there when y'all recorded that video? No, not there. Um, after that, after that, we he started investing in some of those things, and he started showing me videos of like Kobe Bryant and Vanessa when um he was going through his little thing and how she was like rubbing his hand. So did the media person tell her to put on that bonnet or that whatever it's called? And no, I camera? think she already had that her bonnet of salvation on. Consoling him, why? And he was like, "Yeah, you gotta rub my hand. You gotta, you know, like you see how she is. You gotta." And I'm like, "Okay, but I, I'm not an actor. I, I can't do that." And so that just caused a little bit of. I'm like, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I'm, our, I'm doing good just sitting here, <laughs> you know. Seriously, like that's all I got for you. And I'm hoping. And that body language told it all. Yeah. The way he had her all wrapped up in him with them big ass hands, all holding her and stuff. We just was like, look at him. And got I, got her feeling head. uncomfortable like this. Yes. <laughs> oh, pregnant! I don't even know what to do. I was thinking he got his claws just deep in her. Look at him. I never talked on camera before. I have like I don't even know what to do. So. <laughs> so all I got, I'm gonna sit right here. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna stand look. beside you. So and I'm gonna look at the camera. And you told us everything we needed to know Indeed. by just sitting there and looking. Camera. Yep. That's exactly what you did. <laughs> That's too. exactly what I did. Like what? What I did? I am never. I had never sat in front of a camera before, right? <laughs> so this, all these components, and that's one of the reasons why um, I never really wanted to be at the forefront. Um, it wasn't just like he, him hiding me either. It's like, I don't really want to be at the forefront because I know people are cruel. And, you know, at the time I had all these insecurities and all of these things, which were serious. We kind of touched yeah. on some of them. I wouldn't have, I would have killed myself had this happened in like three, four years ago. I literally, and I, and I, and I don't say that loosely. Oh, I know. I, I do know. not say that loosely. I know. Like, I really mean that. And there was a couple of, of attempts in the past. So um, I wouldn't have been able to survive it. It's crazy how her self-esteem was so low that she believed that she couldn't even be in front of the camera. But look at how well she's carrying herself now in front of this camera. She has a very fun personality. She's yeah. Funny. That's why when somebody said she um, was a sag, I was like, I can see that. Because, you know, we love to joke. We love to have a good time. Yeah, it's like I know they said she's a sag, but I think her birthday is on the 21st. And that's like, because I'm getting a lot of cap energy from her, too. I mean, of course you're going to get both. But yeah. at the end of the day, she, like they said, she a sag. Yeah. But so it is what it is. <laughs> If not had been for, for God. And it gives more credence to Helmet of Salvation. It does. As people want to laugh about it. How do you laugh about the Helmet of Salvation? I, I really like this. Because <laughs> she look crazy as hell with this, you know. <laughs> Don't know. So it, I'm really confused behind it because it's like, okay, the word of God is active and alive, right? So if I speak the word of God and I say, I'm activating the full armor of God, the Helmet of Salvation, just because you can't see it, something is activated yeah. around my around my mind and my thoughts are being attacked, right? So it says, bring every thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Punishing all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So I got to bring every thought. People are telling me you're emotionally um, wrecked, you're mentally ill. You're th if I don't do something spiritually, that those things are going to plant into my spirit. And my spirit is already 
messed up from all the stuff that I've been going through that you have no idea about. And I'm pregnant. So that just amplifies everything. So I need something stronger than um, grounding techniques. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me ask you this. You don't have to answer this if you yeah. don't want to, because this is just your private business. Were you ever diagnosed with any type of mental illness during that time? No, actually, I wasn't. And I, we had sat in front of some some high class um, therapists. We had a, um, a therapist actually in the UK. She does a lot of TV shows and things like that. We still talk to her. <laughs> but um, she did not. I took tests. Did they diagnose you clinically depressed or anything? I did not get diagnosed clinically depressed outside of my um, postpartum. Yeah. Outside of my postpartum, which... Um, I got cleared and approved uh, of all all the times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I went through my little stint of that. I have not been diagnosed with any other mental illnesses Good. or anything. Good. Wow. So I had the salvation work, didn't it? It did. Come on, somebody. Because <laughs> there's people that have been through less stuff that have lost their entire mind. Complete That's true. mind. And, That's and true. we don't understand how how much, how important it is to really fight those things and, and not accept other people's reports about us because it plants into our spirits and then once we start believing that it then we become that so as, as a man think, think so, is, so he. is he so if i start thinking oh i do have a, all these things wrong yeah. with me then i mean it's a wrap yeah. and i'm like i refuse to believe that yeah. i don't care what's going on jesus said yeah. i'm healed and i'm whole and this helmet of salvation is going to do something for me i don't know what it's going to do yet yeah. but it's yeah. going to do something because he said his word cannot lie and it will not return to him boy and that's all i know so answer this. How did you become this woman that was afraid to get in front of the camera? And then after all that happened, then you felt the need to respond. And now you're over here saying the heaven of salvation stuff. And now you're you're cursing people out, saying, you know, saying they're going to go to hell and everybody come against you and your husband. You speaking curses on what 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 happened? Well, so there is a process that everybody goes through when they're, you know, everybody has to go through a, a, a process. And it's about how you respond to the process, especially when you're called into to ministry. And I don't claim by any means to have done everything perfectly and in the right order. You know, I'm learning through it and growing into the ministry. So there's a lot of, there's a lot. I'm like, dang. All right, Lord, I didn't know. Like, I'm trying to figure I'm it out. I'm still trying to learn this thing. I'm still trying to figure it out. I just learned this yesterday. I'm trying to use what you, <laughs> practical application, right? So, you know, like, you know. He, so. Rihanna, you can't be laughing over there. Can't. <laughs> so practical application is like, you're teaching us this. You want us to use it. I'm using it. I don't know what I'm doing. So, so again, I don't claim to have done everything right, but I'm as I'm learning it, I'm doing it. I'm demonstrating it. And yeah. this is how the Lord is refining me, right? Because we all have to go through a refining process. We're being tested. I'm being tested in this time. Not yeah. only is the world coming against me, but now I'm being tested for the call that he's called me to. There it is. You know, so am I going to stand firm in my beliefs? Am I going to stand firm in um, t telling my story in my testimony? Or am I going to allow the world to tell me what my story is? There it is? Or am I going to allow the world to define who I am? Or am I going to believe God's report about who I am and what he's called me to do? There it is. So. So what did you, what did you, <laughs> someone was telling me about the video. I was going to look for it before the interview, but I didn't want to be brainwashed and all this stuff. What did you curse? What did you say to people? Psalm 109. I mean, literally, it's it it is it is a plea for help against false accusers. What you say? I want you to put this up. <laughs> it's a plea for help against false accusers. Okay, it says, "Let their children be vagabonds on the earth. <laughs> Let the mercy of God be withdrawn for, from them." Right? I'm where's my Bible at? I, Who got a, I didn't bring my physical Bible in here. <laughs> You you're, Psalm so, 109, so you, go to verse like it's like nine, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. You said you found this. Let script. their let their children be fatherless. Let their <laughs> <laughs> let <laughs> like I'm quoting the scripture. It's a plea for help against false accusers. Now, many people for the mouth of the wicked. <laughs> where you want me to start on verse okay. two? Um, go. It's like what I actually said is like verse like nine, ten, eleven. Like oh, this between. is good though. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. Yes. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with the words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love, they 
are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over me, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife of a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. That's let them said. see. He said, that's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> and everybody's like, she's cursing people. I'm like, did you read your Bible? Did not. Did You can't be. <laughs> you mad because I know how to pray, and you don't? Like, that is not a me problem. That's a you problem at this point. Why are you going to curse their kids? Why are you going to say their kids are going to be vagabonds? Why are you going to do that? What the hell is a vagabond? You know what a vagabond oh, no. is? <laughs> he said, let their children be continually Why? vagabonds. And, and then she said, this is for false accusers. Like, I wonder who was, like, false accusing what he really was. They was accusing him of cheating, right? Well, maybe they were saying things against her. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his so posterity be cut off. I'm quoting the word of God. <laughs> we mad because she I'm didn't quoting have the word nothing of God. else to quote, so she had to quote God. <laughs> Seriously, that's what I want to know. Why? I thought they said when they, when you get slapped in one cheek, you turn the other cheek or some shit like that. Well, she did. That's like that. That's why she quoting scriptures. No, that ain't <laughs> turning your other cheek. That yes, it mean. is. Cause she could have went on there and she could have said something else. Turning your other cheek is not saying she had nothing at all. Nah, that's not necessarily what that means. Oh, <laughs> honey. I'm so upset because I quoted the word of God. So you sat there and read this. Did you read this to to the people, or you wrote it? I didn't it? read the whole thing. I read those the the but vagabond, the, the father, the let be them father. be fatherless, the because you know why? Because <laughs> I knew that that would get a rise out of out of a lot of people, and they don't read their Bible, so they don't know where it's at. But this is the word of God. When you come against God's people, He gives us words. He, he literally, like, we don't have to think of these prayers. They're already there in all the Psalms for every situation that we go through. When we're depressed, when we have anxiety, when we don't, when we're broke, when he gives us words to say, and these are not necessarily literal words, right? So if we want to get into the theology, since I am whole. It's a vagabond, a person who wanders from place to place without a home or a job. She wished these people out of their homes and their jobs. Well, they probably said some worse to her. <laughs> yeah, you that's how Christian was. Oh man. You see how Everybody these in fight. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you see how these heathens fight. Baby. <laughs> she just wished them out of home and a job. <laughs> and the kids. The kids. It was the kids, wasn't it? Man, well, well whoever it was, I tell you, you let them heathens, they'll put some worse curses on you. At okay. Roberts University. For real? Yes. You know when it got a, a master's in divinity? I'm 4.0. Wow. A little master nerdy stuff. Christian a little nerdy ministry. stuff. Oh, Lord, I don't want that smoke with you then. <laughs> so so <laughs> if we want to get into the actual, okay, like let's get into what I said in Psalm 1, 109. When we look at the text, we have to look at the literary, how it was written, the literary context and all that. Well, it's not a literal meaning right this is an exaggeration and a plea for help because this is describing the pain that i'm feeling on the inside of me right but god has given me the proper words to to say that will help me to stay from like sinning against my my brother per se and saying something that will really condemn them like yeah. in in an ungodly yeah. way but he's giving me the words to exaggerate he's giving me exaggerated words to express my feeling internally and then from there, then he decides whatever he's going to do from there. So it doesn't literally mean like, oh, you're you going to say it. Now everybody's going to be cursed just <laughs> right. because Danea said it. She just cursed everybody. Right. And so when we get into actually studying the word of God and like, again, like the literary and the theology part of it, it's not a literal meaning of that. So we have to look at the literary context and all of that to understand that this is an exaggeration. We're using hyperbole and simile, which some people yeah. don't know what that is. So I highly recommend <laughs> Google search. Um, <laughs> let, my, let my adversaries be clothed with shame and let them cover themselves with their own confusion as with a mantle. 
I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yea, I will praise him among the multitude, for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him for, from those that condemn his soul. And it goes right in, in, in accordance with no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every and tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned, for this is my inheritance because I'm a servant of God. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So he gave us the words to say to, to come together with that scripture. And so people are mad because I use my Bible because I read it. Hey, I say however she needed to fight being in that fragile mind state. I agree. It's just, I'm just glad she's still here with us. I probably wouldn't have even been online. I just would have been like, you know what? I'm done. Like, she probably felt guilt. She probably felt backed into a corner. Yeah. You know, some people won't fight. Like how she said, how they said at first she didn't even want to get on camera. She was all quiet. Maybe she felt backed into a corner. Like, I got to fight for my family. I gotta well, fight. like she said, she had been asking him to take a stand. So this was her way of taking a stand. And that's just what it looked like. She was saying, my man, my man, my man. Before they were saying that shit. <laughs> And I, and um, they mad I that you, you you used the Bible. They mad because you posted it oh, to well. the world, and then and then and, 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 and along with the. How the, am I supposed to teach the word of God if I don't? Well, you supposed to teach. You ain't supposed to curse it. You ain't supposed to. You supposed to say, "Hey, listen. You know what I could do? You know, it's a, it's a scripture he said, in the Bible." Lead by example. No, no, Danae, you can say, "Hey, there's a scripture that I really <laughs> I find solace in right now. It's Psalms 109. And let me read this scripture. And you know, if See, you know, I got you though. Yeah. So. Like two weeks before then, I actually did that where I actually read the whole psalm. And Bishop, my my father in the Lord, R.C. Blakes, he will watch that video that I did. And I actually talked about Psalm 109. I read the whole thing. I did a whole teaching on it before you, 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 I even released that video two weeks later. They ain't going to see that part. Of course they don't. <laughs> They, they saw you with the cursing everybody. Of course. Was you, acting, was you acting real crazy in the video? No, I wasn't. You are just reading it. I, I, I just Because everybody refer to that. They say she done cursed everybody on the internet. No, what I said was that every every everybody that is coming against me and, and talking against me and Derek Jackson with slander, mockery, lies. Your kid's going to be back. All this, all this shall happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was asking. What's yeah, the what was the lies they were telling? Unless it was... I mean, because the thing is, he was cheating. Yeah. And I don't know. I can't remember what all Tasha K said back then. But clearly, she knew. Um. So, I just want to know what did she now consider. Now, the slander and the mockery? Oh, yeah. Man, I'm glad I ain't got no kids. There'd be some vagabonds by now. <laughs> Baby. Because I so was mocking and laughing at their ass. They look funny. <laughs> I quoted the word of God. That's what you're supposed to do. Y'all don't know how to. Y'all don't know how to fight in the spirit. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> that ain't got nothing May to do with me. Make your kids be vagabonds and beg for bread. Hyperbole. <laughs> Hyperbole. I stand behind it. I stand firm. I do not regret what I said. You it's stand with the word of God. I do stand on it. He gave me words to say for a reason. I used it. She said, he "I said, said what I said." of the spirit is what. So you know that's her sad energy. Yeah. Rightly divided. <laughs> The sword of the spirit is the word of God. And so um, I use the word of God and apparently I shaked up a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So you did the video. Did that help bring closeness to your marriage? Um, so we, at that point, by the time I did that video, we had, he had already sent me the text message talking about he, he wanted to end the um, marriage. So hold what? on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. That don't make sense. Mm-hmm. No, hold Wait, on. You yeah. didn't record a video bef after he already... He's looking a damn fool. She was trying to still hold on to this little funky saga. And, and look, still trying to hold on to him, but mad about what people saying. Right. She's just getting karma. He getting... Everybody getting it. He said he wanted a divorce. I did. Huh? I did. So he sent you a text message saying he wanted a divorce, and then you went and sat and recorded a video to stand beside him. I went because I knew that it was a spiritual attack. I didn't know. I didn't know that all what was going on on his part. I knew he was acting weird. So I was like, okay, this is a spiritual attack. I'm feeling this like very hard. Like this scripture is running it running on me. So I was like, okay, let me see what's. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the scripture. I'm gonna do it, and then after I did that, everything became like. 
visible to her. Then I found out about the 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 girls, the women. Then I found out about all these. I'm like, we're Lord. talking about the women. You already knew about the women. Yeah. The the other there was more. I didn't know about all of them. You knew about eleven. So I you knew said about the more 11. than eleven. I knew I knew about the eleven. There's more. <laughs> there's more than that because homegirl that had my name in her mouth was not on the list of the eleven. So um, I don't know if he gave me the first starting eleven or the last damn. starting eleven <laughs> or the middle. Well, damn. But her name wasn't on it, so she wouldn't start. <laughs> um, <laughs> so so he told you want a divorce when. Sept- and how did he tell you that? September 29th, 2022, he sent me a text message um, saying that he was done so with the marriage. So 2022, but the so video was recorded in 2021. No, the video was recorded in 2022. The, the, the what's known as the Helmet of Salvation video? Oh, no, that one, that was in 2021. Are oh, you talking about the cursing video? The cursing video, yeah. Okay, so, so we don't we yes. pass that. Yeah. I want to go back to how did y'all, after you recorded that video, we're going to call it the Helmet of Salvation okay. video, How what did the marriage start looking like? Oh, after that, um, we were, we leaned in. I feel like we leaned in to each other. We had our spiritual counsel actually came closer. They were making house calls um, to, <laughs> to, to us, bringing us stuff, um, talking to us individually. Um, and then, and then there was some, he started asking me questions like, do you, when's the last time you were in love or yeah, in love with me? And I was like, like two years ago, like I love you, but I'm not in love with you right now. And in my mind, it makes sense why I'm not necessarily in love, but I do love, right. I do love you. And so that created a huge wedge between us. And that was about June, 2021. Like, yeah, about During June, that time, July. Y'all still, was there ever a season where you were just like, I'm withholding sex from my husband? There, there, yes, <laughs> there was, there absolutely was. And that was like right after that June, July, um, when I, he asked me if I, I loved him. I said, I don't, I'm not in love with you, but I do love you. And then like that created a wound in, <laughs> in him. And so then there was just like, I can't trust him. Like with my body, it was just like a lot of like bickering back and forth between us. That was the only bit. time that happened in your marriage? No. Way in 2021? No, like, but well, we, clearly we weren't having a whole lot of sex before before then because he was at the condo. So I mean, I mean but just when come he, through and run through and then go back. It's like I just don't get it. Like, just think, a man like him, he was making videos by himself. It wasn't centered around being in a relationship or nothing. So my, it's like how you asked earlier, he could have did all of this and left her out of it. Like, why did he have to drag her in and hang on to her like that? He could have been single make these videos giving all these women relationship advice and been able to sleep with all the women he wanted to yeah i think he couldn't have been exposed yeah i think that like i said i think um it just blew up so say for instance they were already young he had already established that foundation of cheating on her right so then when she kept being around even though she knew he was cheating all of a sudden now she's pregnant so now he got his mama telling him you need to do the right thing and i don't know how old his mama is but we all know those parents of when people get pregnant they be like it's time you need to go ahead and marry her you don't need to just have her out here being pregnant i don't know if his mama was like that but he probably was trying to do the right thing at the time but i do think at some point he knew that he made a mistake but I don't know why he kept holding on to her because I know at one point it was beneficial to him. She was helping him with his work. I'm sure she was helping with the business. So he needed her at some point. It's just at some point he got to the point where it didn't matter if he lost her or not. He had probably already knew he was going to be successful. But he could have definitely left her and this situation not even blew up because nobody knew about her. All right. Okay. Did he do that? Um, sure. <laughs> We're going to go with that. Did you say that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you um, there that? was, a, there was occasions and like towards the end before I even left and all that, when I like, I knew I, I would start showing up to the condo, condo rec- randomly and like, let's, let's do it, you know? And he was like, no, I just want to talk and I want to, you know, so I, you want to talk. <laughs> so... <laughs> He wants to talk to me, but he is smashing <laughs> these ladies <laughs> hard. 
damn balls deep. I heard the prime starts like you know. So anyway, <laughs> you heard the prime start what? <laughs> it was like late twenties, early thirties for men. Apparently, it hits later for women though. <laughs> So, um, oh, it, it felt like she could see that video playing in her head right, right now mm-hmm. while she was talking. He wanted to talk to me. <laughs> um, so that's what we did. So y'all talked. We, well, yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, and, and, and in 2021, it was when you said after you bruised this ego because you said that it was two years ago where you were in love with him. Is that backtracking up to back to when y'all got married? Um, a little bit, a little bit after yeah, we got is. married. A little bit after because, like, after we got married, he, there were still inappropriate conversations and all of that. And so, when I'm thinking about like when was I truly like actually in love? It was like two years, two two years ago, like where I really felt that. And so, in 2019, er, um, early early 20 early 2019, we like. I was feeling myself. I was like, I'm in therapy. I done lost 66 pounds. I'm fine. You know, like I have, I have arrived. I'm healed and whole. No, <laughs> far from it, right? <laughs> but it was on. I was on the path. You was on, you was on the upward I was on the climb. path. But um, that's where I really felt like I'm in. I'm in. Like I'm in love with him. And he was feeling the whole time like I am miserable. I can't wait to get away from her. Clearly, he was smashing everything that was coming around. So. We had two different things that we were feeling at that particular time. Did you ever find out how many women from the beginning, he actually baby. cheated on you with? Was As there a whole time in marriage? In, out, or whatever. Was there ever a moment that y'all had a, like a come to Jesus moment where y'all, he sat down and said, listen, to my knowledge, this is how many women I've slept with. Okay, so part of the um, recovery um, process where we were in the program for infidelity and all that is discovery. And in discovery, it's like we've trickled out a lot of information. Now it's time to go to level zero, ground zero, they call it. And so we had to he had to make a list. And so he made a list of women, so everything that he could recollect. And there was nearly a hundred women on there. And so You're talking about the hundred. So if he put a hundred on there, it probably was three hundred. He done left two hundred of them. Going back that he to. wrote on the list. Now you talking about why y'all? You mean tell me he ain't got not one STD after sleeping with all them women? Come on now, especially in Atlanta. Oh man. Oh, you talking about in his lifetime, or you talking about why y'all were dealing with each other? Okay, so we have to define these things. Um, so I did not do a good job at defining if it was the lifetime of of his lifetime or if it was specific to just. Um, well, heck, he been dating you since he was nineteen. Right. So, so in my mind. It's, to me, that's a lifetime, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. in my mind. So I'm thinking um, at least since we have met, um, since we were 19. He wrote uh, He wrote down 100 names. Yes. What did you think when you saw that? That. <laughs> <laughs> the name is silly. <laughs> What she thought? Like, oh God! I mean, what do you really do with that? Like, I don't, I don't know. I was just like, okay, I, forgi- I'm, I forgive you for all these things. We got counsel, so it wasn't just like he gave me this list and it's nothing, <laughs> right? We actually had counsel. Like, okay, walk us through this. We're revealing this stuff. Like, what did you think? How are you feeling today? I'm just like, that's how I feel, <laughs> you know, no. like, right? And it's like, okay, well, now that this is ground like level zero now we can rebuild move forward and rebuild and so it's from there it's like okay i have to make a conscious choice every day to not think about or not not to re-bring it up you know unless it's relevant to like this phase of the healing that i'm going through because we're dealing with it through therapy or whatever but not just to be like randomly yeah i remember um 99 you know like (laughs) i i you know so um, it's a process to, and it's a shock, right? And again, there's a, a crushing that goes on with that. But I made a choice, like, okay, I'm deciding to be here. I'm deciding to go through this process. So I'm going to try this. And again, I'm dealing with this pregnant, guys. I'm whole pregnant, 
right? So did I do that successfully? No, I got whole pregnancy hormones. I'm yeah. mad. There's days I'm just mad. Yep. I'm just like, get out, <laughs> like get out. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see you right now. Don't touch me. Don't like look at me right now. Like I'm just upset that you even allowed it to get to this point. Like why were you so careless? Yeah. Like, did you not think about this? Yep. Did you? Why didn't you get a gag order on these? Yeah. You know, like you, you over like, here trying to you right. trying to protect the bag. Right. You like you should did this. You right, right. So there was a lot of that, and then so with that, I think that took a toll on him too. Um, just like his, he's he's still a whole person that has feelings and all that. Would you been okay with this? So let's 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 let's, let's reimagine your marriage. Would you be okay with him saying this? Danea, this is it is what it is. I I love having sex with multiple women. I'm never going to dishonor you. I will make sure that none of this is is brought out in the open. I'm gonna have this on the side. You're gonna be provide the lifestyle that you dream of. I'm gonna honor you. I'm gonna respect you. I'm gonna take care of the kids. I'm gonna be a very present husband. But you have to allow me. I'm a man of means. You have to allow me to have sex with multiple women as I see fit. What verse, Can you agree with that? What Bible verse is that? We ain't gonna go by no Bible verse. It's the book of Derek. <laughs> no. or do you agree with this? Do you agree with this? No. No. I, I I hear what she's saying, but some telling me she would have. If you was lining up in that staircase, going to see him, y'all was passing each other. Some telling me that if he just would have set her down and just said that, she probably would have went for it. And then I want to know what scripture that's in. <laughs> He say there's a story about <laughs> King David. He had uh, multiple wives and even more concubines. Okay, but and, was a, and, and the Bible read, called him a man after God's own heart. Did we did we read the whole thing, or are we just reading the? the We're gonna read what of, benefits me in this situation. Okay, well, so can you do this for me? No, <laughs> it's gonna be a hard no for me. <laughs> now this the person asking oh, when they've been through and therapy. So, what made what broke? He sent you a, a text message. You told me he sent the text message you saying he wanted a divorce. When was that? That was September 29, twenty twenty two. And where were you when you get, received that text message? I, we were both at home. He was upstairs. I was downstairs on the couch. Oh, wow, um, Damn. I had just actually come back from. Um, I did a freedom group where you basically, you know, you're going through freedom with all these people. And you're talking about stuff with a group of women and stuff like that you know confidentiality we're talking about forgiveness and i was i was like i'm gonna go home i'm gonna say you know i forgive him for anything anything that i've been holding on to or been has been coming out of me out I, I, and i did that i said i forgive you anything like that i have been doing that has shown unforgiveness i forgive you mm-hmm. for that and the next words out of his mouth was or via text should i say was um I was done with us in this marriage after I said that. And I was like, okay, Lord, this is what what forgiveness gives you. (laughs) You said, said, I forgive you of everything. And he said, I want out of the marriage. Yes. Yes. Now to even make, to spice it up, because I like spice. Um, a couple of days before that, two day, about two days before that, we had, we were intimate. We were intimate, and then the next day, he's at, like, this is leading up to the text message. The next day, he was like, um, I don't want to be intimate with you anymore for two months. I just want you to be completely whole and healed because I know you're still uncovering your, um, your rape trauma and all this stuff. And I was like, how does that make any sense? How is that helping us? We just got done talking to someone that said that we need to come closer. Yeah together and that I need to be um, communicating to you any whatever discovery I do have but I'm still able to yes. do something which I have I was doing stuff <laughs> you know so um, I, was doing stuff. I, I was doing stuff and so um, he's like I don't even want that because it just feels like re- constant rejection and I'm like okay well he how said do- he felt rejected by you and, yeah. and even though you were so wait, wait, I was wait. accommodating in other ways if even if it was like okay right now like penetration is not like the best move right now but i still care about pleasing you yeah so you and take so care i'll of do other things right and so it's just like i don't even want that you know like it's, it's just constant rejection i'm just like okay well this is about both of us right so i have to hold on so was it also like she she 
I wonder if this is during the time when she said she didn't trust her body with him. So maybe she was trying to give him head because she ain't want to. I wouldn't have trust my mouth with him. He would have got a hand. That could have <laughs> been one of the things she was doing. Yeah. He could have he got a hand job. Yeah. Can't get STDs on your hand for real, <laughs> can't you? <laughs> communicate to you like this is what's going on with me and i'm like i need help i need deliverance i'm speaking to such and such you see me speaking to such and such such and such like i'm trying to figure this yeah. thing out because this is important to yeah. me like i want to figure this out and he's like i want you to be completely whole i don't want to do anything for two months and then i was just like okay and i walked i walked away and she then the next okay. day he, but that's how these men now they be saying I want to go back in the, in time where women shut up and they were being submissive. But look at the shit women was dealing with. But you also know how I said, if you don't know who you are, you will attract somebody who won't know who you are either. And they will treat you as such. Yeah, and it's like... So it's like, he didn't got with this woman. He has damaged her. And it was somebody who left a coming who they said, he got her in her prime. He didn't got yeah. her in her prime. Still was doing whatever the freak he wanted to do. And then got this woman and broke her down to the point that she's like this now. And that ain't what he and attracted look, to. These A lot of these women. So, you again, you're hearing a lot of these men on the Internet. They're talking about, oh, they want a young girl. They get the young girls. They use them up. And then they get to whatever age she is. And then now they look at her and be like, look at you. You a single mama. Don't nobody want no single woman in her late 30s, 40s, however she is with kids. Don't nobody want that. And, <laughs> look, and she only got one baby daddy. But they would still say, and and Derek was her age and did this to her. Can you imagine the circles that an older man do on a younger woman? Yeah, but Derek is definitely really advanced. Yeah. That's why he's able to make all this content telling women how to deal with men and all that shit. But that's what I'm saying. And everybody wondering about the modern woman. Women nowadays, black women, they don't know how to shut up. Why can't they go back to being submissive? This is why. This is almost like evolution. Like, we see what happened when the woman do this. Ain't nobody trying to deal with that shit no more. And our daughters, we don't want them dealing with that shit. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to yeah. see more modern women and more advanced than that. Yeah. Two days after that, then he um, sent me the text message. It said, I'm done with us in the marriage. Fuck you. And so. This is like, How did that and make you the next feel? day after that, he said, he came to me in person. And and it was like, do you have any questions about my text message? And I was like, no. What you respond? You just responded, okay? Yeah. I said, I said, okay, if that's what you want. And then the next day, he made a video. He's wearing all brown. And it's like, if somebody says, okay, if that's what you want, it's manipulative. And I was like, oh, and then I commented on it. I you like, know what? I was thinking that. I said, I bet sometimes when he was doing videos, when they was going through shit, he would be making videos targeted towards her. You can't tell me he wouldn't do that sometimes. And somebody who don't even know who she is, she's like, oh, well, I need to do this. You know, it's like he's manipulating her off camera and fucking on camera. I wonder, though, when he did send that message, did she feel like a release? Like he released her? Did she feel that? No? Oh, probably a little bit, but then probably she felt like a little bit of a failure. Because I think the worst thing is for a woman to let a man walk all over them like this like and then man. let the man leave them. That's what my daddy did to my mama. It's like you That's got to feel like the lowest of the low. You didn't stay with them doing all of this infidelity, all the different women, all the, you know, outside festivities that they have going on. And then they have the nerves to break you down and leave you. Because like now you, you, seem, you seem weak and you don't seem stable or like the type of woman that they want. You know, you don't woe out your poom poom, your titties ain't the same, you're older, you got kids, and they be like, don't no other man want her. Ain't nobody else want her. Hmm, facts. <laughs> I got blocked, I think. <laughs> so. <laughs> you see, you think you got blocked? Yeah. 
He but, said that if someone says okay after you make a statement that's manipulative. Yeah. I mean, literally, that's verbatim what I had messaged him when he sent me, hey, I want to end the marriage. Like, I'm done with us in the marriage. And I was like, okay, oh, that's what you want. This. So he said, if you tell me I want to get a divorce and I say, okay, if that's what you want, I'm being, I'm being manipulative because I'm saying, okay, if that's what you want. Something to that effect. Yes, he, he, mm-hmm. Now, he didn't say my name or anything. Of course anything. he didn't say I, your uh, name, but, you but know, I'm saying I'm just talking about the statement isolated. Yeah. How is that manipulative if someone says okay in agreement to something that you said? That that ain't some backwards stuff. I'm, I, trying, I'm still trying to figure things out. So He wanted her to still fight. I ain't never smoked weed in my life, but I think I'm going to start no, smoking. No, we were that in the name of too much fentanyl. Don't fuck with it. I need it's to this. understand what this thought philosophy is because that don't make no sense. We rebuke <laughs> it in the name of Jesus. You you shall be free from marijuana in the name of Jesus. Great, <laughs> smoke weed. You're over, see, you got to watch what you say about the next. She's like, I, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You better not. not no, I'm talking, not you. I'm telling the, 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 the thought. She said the thought. The thought about it. You don't have you to do that in your life. The, it was a joke. I know. I know. I know. Come on. I mess with you. I like so to. This, I, I joke in weird ways. So I'm gonna stop. I'm be no, serious. No, no, no. Be be, be you because I'm loving it. Um, and so when you look at that, then you comment, and then what happened? How did Charles' relationship has? Because technically, y'all are still married, correct? Yes, we're still married. And we're just filed. Y'all filed. Y'all filed. He filed. Who initiated the divorce? He filed. Um, he filed on October 13th, and then I counterfiled on October 25th. Why did you counterfile? Adultery. Um, what did he file? Irreconcilable differences. Um, adultery because when he sent me the text message on the 29th, that was a couple of days before our daughter's sixth birthday, and um, our friend that like wanted to speak about me um, on his page was in town um, on our daughter's birthday weekend and so he spent a couple hours with us and then they went and did whatever they were doing while they were in town so um yeah so i think that qualifies because we were still married um as adultery so and so y'all haven't gone to any hearings y'all haven't done anything it's just foul no we haven't gone through any hearings we're waiting i think oh well i'm counting the days down and all that so we're waiting we're waiting it's a process apparently i didn't know it was a whole process to get divorced i'm learning <laughs> she said i didn't know i did not know you i thought, thought it right. was like they say it's cheaper to keep her i love and get divorced yeah i thought it was quick i thought like you know you just push a button and you be like i want divorce they say granted yeah i really did but apparently like there's a whole process, process. you gotta wait for yeah like if you broke it's probably like quick and easy but when you got assets and all this extra stuff going on nah probably not quick or these dates and court dates and all these things i'm like what do you still view yourself as a married woman <laughs> um so in the eyes of god yes i do still so i'm over here waiting until i'm released completely um but <laughs> wait but, waiting for what waiting to be like just completely like done with this part of the relationship to, to go on about my life and, and not date. just no i'm not ready to date right no i'm not ready to date or to do any of that um i'm enjoying my i like to call it freedom right um <laughs> and healing and healing and so um it would be that's what i'm saying another thing too you hear a lot of like uh, when i be in the comment section you see a lot of guys saying look that's why that's why all these black women still single now and i'm thinking like a lot of women are enjoying just being single a lot yeah. of women are choosing to be single than to deal with some of the bullshit you have to deal with yeah and being in a relationship be irresponsible for me to be dating right now i've learned my lesson i you know jumped into a relationship three weeks after rape trauma i'm not about to jump into anything after, after all this trauma all of this and think that i'm about to have anything successful and what i want so i'm gonna take some yeah, time to myself Proud and my kids and focus on building my ministry and um continuing to heal in a lots of ways and and developing our children and you're still extremely young you mind telling people how old you are yeah i'm 33 i'm 33 oh, wow. Fine. Hey. Look at the, yeah. okay <laughs> tell me you see me you see it you, you see, see it? it i ain't gonna even lie i thought she was 40. <laughs> no. <laughs> when you think about it, it's like you've been through all of this and you're just 33. I'm 33. 
you would think I would look a little bit older, right? Yeah. Considering, because you yeah. know there are people that yep. they wear all the trauma that they've experienced in their life. Like you can see it on their in their physical. Very true. And I feel like, listen, the Lord has blessed me with not at least carrying all of it in my face. Mm. So. So what's on the horizon for you, Denea? Um, I'm continuing to build my ministry, um, my healed school for women and helping them through the cycles of just trauma of, of trying to do some of the things I did, imitate other women, <laughs> you know, yeah. jumping into a relationship too quickly after not dealing with trauma and all those things, the things that I've learned and I've already um, overcome as I'm continuing to heal in other ways, you know, so um, focusing on that and um, being what God has called me to be going into that next chapter. <sighs> You talk about a healed school. How can people connect with that school? Healed, yes. It's um, healed.com. It's on my Instagram, so you can go to the link on my Instagram. There's, You'll see it. It says healed on it, and it's Infidelity Recovery Boot Camp. It's a eight-month process, and it's the same eight-month process that I had to go to the, through to really deep dive into some of those childhood traumas and, and, and pains and even the rape traumas and um, heal God's way. And it's a supplement to the natural world therapies and all that, because I do think that's important. Yes. And I'm not a licensed therapist or a psychologist, so you, there will need to be that aspect um, as a supplement to this process. When I think about how intentional God is, do you realize that you haven't even scratched the surface or began to approach the destiny that God has called you for? This is just the beginning. <laughs> Danae, let me tell you something who you sitting across. You're sitting across a guy who cheated on my wife multiple wow. times when I was married. Wow. And um, the only difference between me and your current husband is that I never created a platform to try to tell people what not to do and the men and try to bash men. I dealt with my, my struggles privately. Um, I did write her a list and wrote down the names of the people that I had cheated on her with. Uh, I walked through the proper healing from that. I went through therapy and counseling. I did all that, and then I put that behind me. And I just felt like it was best for us to part ways after that. And I prayed and asked God to allow me to divorce my wife with grace. And so she and I still have a cool relationship. Um, and so when I look at the journey that God has brought me through and has, a, has afforded me the opportunity to sit across from a woman that has encountered her heart being mishandled like I did when I was married. Um, I made a vow to myself and I made a vow to my heavenly father that I would do the work in my single life so that I never allow a woman to encounter the mishandling of her heart by my hands ever again. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. And so I, I, I thank you for your transparency. I thank you for your vulnerability. I thank you for uh, shedding light on not only who you are, but who God is. Mm -hmm. Because what's, who sits across from me is a woman that has been through the fire but doesn't smell like smoke. Is a woman who has met adversity and the devil tried to see, the devil wasn't playing with you, Denea. He, no, he no came games. to kill, steal, and destroy your life. He did. But there's a caveat to that story. The Bible says, Jesus says, but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Yes. And so I speak that abundant life over you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I, I speak it. right now in the name of Jesus for God to take the pain that you've been through and produce a platform that you used to be behind the scenes. And now God is shifting you to the forefront. God it. is about to release something in your life that's going to blow your mind. And it's because of the things that you've gone through that now you've gotten the anointing over those situations so that the other women... And even men that are going through their hearts being mishandled through adultery, that 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 God is going to use you just by a word that you'll speak into their life that yes. will break them and, and, and bring freedom into their life like they've never experienced before. And the reason why you're going to carry that level of anointing. It's because you've been through the fire. I receive it. It's because you've been there and done that. I and so it's that. not somebody that read some textbook about how to overcome grief, how to uh, overcome suicidal thoughts, no. how to overcome suicidal attempts, how to overcome reclaiming and regaining your life back. If somebody says, I, I didn't read about it, I am the story. I lived through it. And she had, in my opinion, a monster on her hand that yeah. she dealt with. 
that she overcame. Mm-hmm. Ooh, she probably can teach some real good stuff. I'm a, literally a living testimony of that, and that's why when I get up and do what I do, I'm passionate about it, and I don't back down from that. Excuse me. I don't back down from that, and um, I, I really have a heart to help others because my testimony and my story is the answer to the cry of millions who are struggling and dying mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and sometimes physically from just the level of things that I've experienced that they're experiencing on maybe – a, a, a lower level so you said rc blakes our our, our friend your yes. spiritual father gave you a word that you realized that you had been struggling with where where i said why would you know that someone was cheating on you and then you still marry him why would you go through this and what word did he drop it's a b- broken conscious woman right so i used to be a broken conscious woman and you know, it takes a lot to acknowledge that and then under, un, like unpack that, all the trauma. Like, why would you accept all the things that I just spilled out to you? Why do you accept that? Why would you continue to do it? Broken conscious woman, when you have experienced so many fragmentations in your life, the world is telling you you can only get this by opening your legs and doing it this way. Um, you know, you're experiencing heartbreak you know, in your personal experience, all of this contribute to that. And then you're not dealing with it and being healed from that. So you're carrying it into the next relationship and not realizing that you're carrying and acting on toxicity. You have toxic behavior that you have to heal and be transformed from. And so when I learned that, that term, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was a broken conscious woman. And I absolutely was. There's no way that any woman that is whole in mind is going to try to take on the the mindset of another woman and try to imitate them um, in bed and all of these things, you know. And so I had to acknowledge that, accept and take responsibility and accountability for that and then be able to move forward from there. And that's what I'm hoping that other women can start to do is that we have to take responsibility and accountability for our decision making in that and then be and grow from that and not be ashamed of it because we went through it but understand that that's going to help somebody else and that we maybe um that we've grown from that experience and that god can use it still (sighs) definitely want to give rc a a shout out because uh you conferred with him about whether or not to come on the podcast i did i was like i was like can you can you see if this first off can you see if this is the real person because you know people be in my messages <laughs> pretending to be people and, <laughs> and he was like absolutely you know no hesitation so he he did that and confirmed that and um i really appreciate that because again you know i don't really know what that fatherly dynamic is like and so for him to take on that um role really and really just look look out for me in that way has meant so much and he's constantly telling me how proud he is of me of just handling things the way I've been able to handle it so far and so um, it means a lot to me and I just love him and um, Lisa so much (laughs) yeah I love them they're amazing they were on the podcast they absolutely amazing Uh, I got a DM I was on the plane for coming from Jamaica and my good friend Tam she uh sent me a uh the video it was a video that you posted where you started dropping screenshots of um tabloids and articles where they were talking bad about you and it has somebody preaching the background and you was like who and what and all that stuff or whatever they said you need to get on the podcast and I was like man I said let me let me go see cuz I had DM'd you uh a while back and um, no response. So I said, this time I'm gonna go ahead and send it as an email. And I said, she's supposed to be on here. This is the season of Miracles and Manifestation. I will provide the platform where she can speak uninterrupted, unedited her truth, the way she wants to tell it. And then within 10 minutes of me sending that thing, you responded back and was like, okay, I'll do it. I said, hold on, is this the right person? Yes. So we're thinking the same thing. Like, is is this, did she really respond? Is this the right, did she just say she gonna do this? Why is she gonna do this? I thought, why is she gonna come do this? You know, and then, and then I was like, here, send your phone number. I said, that's how I'm gonna know for sure. Send me your phone number and then we're gonna talk. And you sent the number and I was like, all right, cool. Yes. And then I just said, okay, God, I see what you're doing. Um, but then when the first time I got on the phone, because you got to think, 
I, I, before I got on the phone with you, I was like, is this girl, if, if she's dealing with mental illness, I'm not going to put on my platform and exploit her like <laughs> Everybody that. Everybody thinks that. Yeah, because you be posting stuff, and they be like, they be saying this, and I wasn't even following your stuff like that, and I just be hearing rhetoric. And so I was like, I hope I'm not going to put out there. I ain't going to explore it like that. I don't care about an interview. I'm not going to do my sister in Christ like that. So I said, I'm going to vet her and see if she's in her right mind. Man, I get on the phone with y'all. I said, man, girl, what's going on? I mean, it was just like, I said, this girl is so clear, so brilliant, so smart. Smart and, and, and so healed because that was the other thing. I didn't want you on the podcast if you were going to be bleeding on people. Right. And I knew that it would be too soon. And then I get on the phone with y'all said, okay, God, I see it. This girl is perfect for yeah. this moment. This is, this is your season. The Lord, look, listen, the Lord is showing up and showing out in, in my life. Like literally my whole life is a living testimony. When I say that I'm healed, he literally reached in and pulled some things out of me. Um, maybe there's some some little things that I'm still healing from, but yeah. it's definitely not where it could where it used to be, should I say? And so I've come a long way, and I'm I'm excited for that. And thank you for that. I'm glad you, that somebody can actually have a conversation with me and then be like, you know what? She is not as crazy as they said that she was. <laughs> I mean, you know, her jokes are a little weird, but. <laughs> You know? Your jokes be funny. I was dying <laughs> laughing at you. It was funny. You one, one thing, one thing that I always know when somebody is healed is when they can laugh. Yes. Healing shows up in laughter so much. When you think about some of the most painful things you've been through, and you'd be like, "Yeah, and I did this, this, this." It's like, okay, because you know, before, like you said, about three, four years ago. You've been out of here. Yeah. You wouldn't even want to have a conversation. You would probably tow up this whole studio. What you know conversation? What I'm Listen, I have busted some windows and slashed some tires. That's okay. That's that's where I would be. All day. <laughs> yes. All day. And that's what I'm talking about. And so what I what, what I heard on the other side of that phone was a hill woman that I knew that God has anointed for such a time as this. Yes. And so um, I want you to continue to be encouraging what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, God is going to blow your mind. You're going to look back it. at these last couple of years. You're going to be like, oh, God gave me double and triple for my trouble. I receive all of yeah. that right watch, now. Watch what happens. Watch, it. watch what I'm telling you. As sure as I am black, I know this is a fact. Uh, I know you it know. is true because you are black. Uh, yeah, I'm black. I'm blackly black. <laughs> I'm black. I'm black. I'm black. <laughs> but no, listen, um, how can they connect with you? Denea Jackson on Instagram, Denea Jackson on TikTok, Denea Jackson 3 on YouTube. Well, Denea Jackson, it ain't like it's spelled the regular way on no Instagram. Well, no, it's phonetically spelled because, you know, everybody doesn't know how to say my name, so I had to go old school. I'll put and a link so, I'll put a link in the description. <laughs> yes, it's, it's D-U-H underscore N-A-Y underscore U-H underscore Jackson, regular oh, um, for my Instagram, it. and that's the same for my TikTok as well and my actual name Denea Jackson regular spell is on YouTube so yes hmm. <laughs> well I hate to let you go but no. we had so much fun. We did. Yeah, we, we had so much to, fun. We had to chop it up again. Yeah, sometime. we're gonna do a live or something. <laughs> I always do a live after the interview. Yeah. And then we chop it up on IG. So let's uh, do that. Yeah, we definitely gotta do that because these people finna they they mind from the they, they already got this little teaser, so they, they like, are like, <gasps> they like boy, what? the what? sweat that is coming down some foreheads right uh, now. Some 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 <laughs> some a particular forehead. They like Jesus, what do you think he'll ever try to come on here? No. Why don't he do interviews? I don't know. I really don't. I can't. Um, I think he does them. It just has to be. I ain't never seen him on an interview on nobody's platform. No. He's been on a couple. Um, I can't remember any of the, the yeah, names I right now. But like, early, early on, early on, like recently, I don't think he's been on any. But and earlier on in the career, he's been on a few. You think he'll come on the Dear Future Wife podcast? Probably not, <laughs> to be honest. I don't, know, believe it. I don't no, believe it either. I don't think he will, you know. So he, he came up with um, the term "dear future wife." So you said he came what? He came up with the term "dear future wife." So I'm just gonna leave it there. Oh, you said he came. With... So. Well, praise the Lord, I own the trademark. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I own dear future wife and dear future wifey. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 So. So yeah. So yeah, that's funny, huh? He it is that he came up with the whole term of dear future all right well listen thank y'all so much we had an exciting time uh y'all give it up for my sister danaya thank you for, thank thank you you for being transparent yes thank it's awesome you. thank y'all
Ladarian. All right. Oh, I thought that was really dope. Um, she does seem to be in a good frame of mind. Um, I think my only concern now would be, well, it's like I'm glad she's not thinking about dating. Um, and I shared this with Nick um, yesterday. My only concern would be when she do get out in the dating world, um, making sure that she vet the person really good because I would hate for someone to know what her story is and then use that to victimize her because a lot of people they watch us all the time they hear us say what we like what we don't like they see what we have tolerated and sometimes they would try to put you to the test so I'm hoping that um, that does not get placed on her plate because I don't think that she would be you know, like, like even though she's strong, I don't think she could take that if somebody tried to switch it up and put her back in that same situation. So I definitely hope that she's careful about the person, the next person that she picked today. Yeah, and I was actually good, glad to see, um, like, who she really is outside of that bonnet video. Um, I really like her personality. I think Me she's too. A cool person. Yeah. All right, well, if y'all enjoyed the reaction, hit the subscribe button. Also, like the video. We'll have to catch y'all next time. Peace. You don't really need a lot of more than this. Because you know what it is. You know what it should be like. You never need a bad friend, but don't be validation. You live it in your truth. Only moment you feel it. That's why I'm tuning into you.